Ja, eigenlijk is al heel wat dan. Ja, we gaan already. Hey you guys, sorry I'm a little bit late. Just been uh, getting my meds from the chemist and that, so I hope everyone's okay, enjoying the uh, weather this morning. I think it's changed, hasn't it? So it's schizophrenic, isn't it? I was out in it again today, a little bit burnt again. I've just got some absolutely unbelievable eyes. I it's fussed up for my eyes. I can't even reach these. And uh, what you do is you spray it on your eyelid, close your eye, uh, spray it on each eyelid, and I've used it. It seems to be working. About 20 minutes ago, it's, it's just stopped. Within about three, well, five or six seconds of having it sprayed in the eye, not in the eye, on the eyelid. So I'm wondering if I'm allergic to the, the stuff. But I've been taking the eye drops themselves. And also still running like a tap. <sighs> but it's a month, about two months. No, it's just one stop running. Allergies, terrible allergies. I've got dogs, paint, cats, dust mites, uh, what else am I allergic to? Fucking fumes like diesel fumes, all that makes me bad. 18 on, don't forget to push the like buttons, guys. 21 on, it's going up slowly. Uh, freedom, hope you're okay. I just left fucking left eye, it's terrible. Just as I said, it stopped and it started water again. Uh, Rich Tea Biscuit 78, hope you're okay, brother. Jimmy B, lovely, lovely to see you on the chat. Phil uh, Summer, hello, Phil. Evening, Brian, Emma, hope the chat are all well. Yes, we are, thank you very much. Edgar, that's probably Edgar Lee, I think that'll be. Yeah, evening, mate. Hello, Freedom, saying. Monty, hello, Monty. Phil Summer's at the bottom, evening, mate. Yeah, so Emma's sent all the stuff off to the police today by the so-called idiot, I can't mention his name, I'll give the copy of my word. So she sent that off now. Maria sent the hard drive off as well with all the stuff on to the CID is involved. He is a CID officer and he just said, I, I said to him, he said, oh, they sat in the other and I said, look, He's putting things up about talking to ex about police officers and all things like that. And he said, well, if he's got that and you've got that and you can prove it, there probably won't be a court case. So this is like complete, so he's gone completely fucking quiet as a lamb. I've never heard him say like quiet. So obviously he's fucking things being shut down in flames now. No, he's airplane, whatever you want to call it. So all the shit are supposed to be calling the same things. They haven't found anything, they said, not a single thing. They haven't done any threats to burn houses down, any threats to show people, any threats to do anything. They're all, all just rubbish. He's going on there every day, 20, 25 times a day, the same person. I'm saying, I'm saying all sorts of shite. But they're obviously just gathering it, but they haven't looked, they've looked and they've never found nothing. So I think, myself, with the complaints officers being involved, his name, this is how I know it's God's helping us. He can't complain, obviously, because they never turned up for the when we got firebombed. They never turned up. The houses when they smashed, they never took forensic stuff. They never took the um. They took the two smoke bombs, and guess what? They've lost the two smoke bombs. How the fuck can you lose two items in a plastic bag as big as that? Two of them, one detonated, one not detonated, and the fireworks were in the car. They made a bomb out of it. They exploded, but half the fireworks are still there. Now, if they had took the pyrotechnics, it's called. You have to be over 21. You have to have a license to buy these. So whoever sent these to him, if they only got Emma's not that she's got him with a camera and took a like a, zoomed in with the phone and zoomed in for the post not the postcode the codes because everything's got codes and even these things have got codes so you can track them then with the tracker. They would have been able to track who they have said they've been sent for Spain or whatever and they have a person's name. You have to give your ID and your name and maybe your your, your license or your a photographic ID, you've got to give her maybe a passport. So that would have caught them straight away. But no, they didn't do that. They've done nothing. They did nothing for 14 months. And now the police have came from London up here to investigate what's been going on. They've only been here about 20 days, I think maybe 20, maybe maybe 20, maybe three three or four weeks. And all of a sudden, four or five days ago, 
we've got a phone for them, the police who's in charge of the case, the inspector. I don't think he's an inspector. And he said he's, he, he will liaison with Emma. If you can get all the evidence of what he's doing, he said, I just can't believe you haven't put the evidence. I said, wait a minute, I have phone juice four times. And every time you say, yeah, we still gather evidence and we're still looking at the case. It's not finished. Well, look, we haven't finished. So how can I give you evidence if you refuse to take evidence of me? And I can prove it because the phone number will be registered in my phone to the police station's number. I can prove every time I phone. And then my solicitors, I spoke to the other day, said, well, we've sent four emails to them and we sent four something else they sent me my camera was another like text or whatever four from we read we ran four times so that's eight times we still sit this phone no nothing's been getting sent back so she there came back me up what's the one of solicitors so it's looking really good so his name was when he talked with emma he said oh i'm pc brian i'm uh, sorry inspector brian I couldn't believe it. Inspector Brian is his name. Fucking hell. If that's not Jesus helping us, I don't know what is. Especially on today. Uh, obviously, Jesus, obviously, what happened all them thousands of years ago. Can't believe it. It was right on the right time when Jesus was uh, crucified and come back from the dead. Resurrection. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. It's just unreal. We've just got a massive. Everyone's fought. Everyone's texting family members. We knew we didn't. We knew with the seeds falling down his ass. We knew land on his, his face. Because all the people he's got in the chats and that has got them all with saying, do this. And he's going, well done. Very good. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Keep it going. Keep it going. All these different people. Well, that's conspiring then when you do that. And inciting violence. When you incite violence like that, it's serious, serious jail time. <laughs> serious jail. So now he's sitting there saying he's had his police friends. And the cop said, what? He's actually said that. What do you mean on, a, on an email? I went, no. On, on a live video. He said about five or six videos. What every time I'm yeah, telling me he's talking with uh, Ray Mallon, the, the mayor's helping him, ex police officers from police force is helping him, and police officers in the area are liaising with each other in cafes and stuff, and they go to meet him and have meals with him. And I said he's also been on YouTube to these police officers, so he said, So, but he can't do that, you're not allowed to do that in the court case. So I'm going, so he said, You can't do that at all. If you've got that, it's a game changer. So that's what we've got now, the game changer. So this is phenomenal. I told them about all the other stuff. They'll call me a retard and a spastic and a mum. Uh, I'll fight you and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this. So we sent them four or five videos from London where he shot a nice more crack and weed. So we've got all that to the police station now. They've got all that. I'll let them go through their evidence and let them do it. Let them, let them decide what's right now. Because all we've had is, all they've had is one side to the story. He said, we've never had your side. So we have to put statements in because that's what you do. You have to, you get the prosecution want the evidence so they can prosecute you and the defence side want the evidence so they can defend you. So all we do now is we're getting people who we know who've been obviously trolled by the said person. We're not mentioning his name on here. I'm not, not, I said I won't do it, I promised him. And we're not, like we've never once, I've never once, I said to the cop, I said, listen, um, I'll be fair with you. I'm not going to fucking bullshit you. I have offered him out a few times. I have said, so have a go fight with him. I said, well, he has offered me out for a fight, so I accepted his challenge. He said, that's okay. And then he said, well, just, just, um, it's not good for your case. He said, what you better do is just let us do the job, what we paid for, and I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'll, I'll give you a fair, fair deal. I said, well, that'll do me. That's all I want. A fair cop involved in it, and that'll do me. And I'm really happy with that. But I know the evidence you're going to get. It's going to make you puke when you look at it. You're going to think, oh, my God, this is terrible. Because we we know that because we had this sent to Paladon. Paladon is a stalking line. And she said, I've, it's only been up six years. She said, I've worked here for. She said, I've never in my life seen anything like this. She said, the vile message and the texts and the threats and all the stuff. She said, it's it's it's, it's just a bump, it's a bump above me. I can't work it out. It's definitely, definitely, I've got mental health issues. Definitely, definitely insane. And she was the top one from Polygon. From they were a stalking, stalking. She said he's not, he's not malicious communication, and it's not such and such. He's stalking you, completely stalking you, and trying to character, character assassinate you. Which she said between six and ten years ago. That, that was her opinion. That's me telling what she thought when she seen it. She said it was terrible because they, what they did, there was a, there was an MP. He was stabbed. 
I, I, because he was what they'd done the stack, so they brought out the stalking the stalking line for Peter being stalked. So I never contacted them, told them what was happening, the threats of grape and all that stuff. And burn the house was down. Gonna do this, get people to come and do this and do that. She said, It's terrible, it's absolutely vile. She said, You can see it's him by the logistic fingerprint, it's always the same thing. Grape, 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 grape your dog, grape your dog, grape your dog, grape your dog. Hundreds and hundreds of them. They, what they do, they've got a computer in the but they'll put, say, rape the dog. Oh, I'm going to bum your dog, say. They'll put that up and it'll come up, say, 300 times it came up. I'm going to bum your dog. The same same thing on the same computers. All computer came up from, from that said person. 300 times, I'm going to bum your dog. I'm going to bum your dog. Totally insane. Totally insane. Never ending this, so now he's fucking retract, retracted. So he's pretended that he, the cops said, Listen, Brian, there's no one police officers talk to him, there's no police officers involved there. But he's still what he's done. Uh, to me, I said to him, I think he's run the case. He said, Well, if you've got that, it's a game changer. He says, I, I've I'll look at that over the weekend, so I think we'll know by next week. I think it'll be a week or so, maybe before they do it. But uh, even if we got a car, we're not bothered because we've got all the other people. Got loads of witnesses who are going to go to court for us who've been stalked, tortured by this man, and they've got all the proof and evidence. They've got all the other all the, all the, all the people in chats where they're sitting talking to them and saying, Well, you say this, you say that, and they, you can see them texting and ganging up with each other. Different loads of different podcasters are going to come down with them, loads of them. They're going to see these horrible fuckers who have been supporting them because they, they can go on the computer, she's seen, find everything out. And Maria's got all their stuff there, Maria's terrible. People putting the burner house down, real roast their kids alive. And uh, they said, Pearson and his wife's in the chat, the full name and the full, full, the full name and the, and the, the, the company the web was there in the chat, going, yeah, 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 brilliant. I'm going to burn your house down. And he's going, brilliant, brilliant. And putting all those of comments on, well done, brilliant. No other people, that's inciting violence, it's terrible. We've never done that. Have you seen the video today where we had to, where we had to explain uh, with Decker Higgy? That's a good one. Trying to, trying to be the big man. He, he, he fell right on his ass. He, that's when he went to the police on me. That was before that. I'm telling you, that was before that. So that was after that when I was bad. But before that, he went to the police on me. And then he wanted to fight me when I was in the wheelchair. Then Big, big, tough man when I was in the wheelchair. Before the wheelchair. Before, five, six months before. I offered to go and fight with a straight at about eight o'clock at night. He didn't want to know. He fought the police. I guess it was in the chat with him. The said person again. He's always in the middle of the mix of everything. Did it with Darren Jay. Did it with me. Did it with everyone. Ted and Nico. Does it? He loves to people and log ahead where they're fighting, which is way, way the opposite way around. Andrew Sheldon, I hope you're okay, brother. Peter DeVoff, respect Paul Crosswell. Yes, we respect everyone in here. Timmy B, I love you, Timmy. I hope you're having a good week. Uh, um, all the way. But not a moment, let him know he got a Spencer. So. Yeah, yeah. Everyone knows, mate. Everyone knows where he is, doesn't he? So I, I put that out. But, you know, why are you doing that? Because I don't want him coming back. If he does come back from there, and people believe he's, he's not this person. So we've got all the evidence. So we're allowed to put that up there because it's all proof. It's all 100% from people who've gone, like his, his, his like Decker's missus, Decker's mum, Decker's um, friends, Decker's business partner, all got the class, 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 Sarah's law, sorry, Sarah's law is the one with, with, with sexual assaults and stuff, and the Sarah's, Claire's law is one with violence, you know, like violent, violent husband or violent wife, you get, you don't believe this, but you get a hell of a lot, and men will get bullied off the wives, really bad bullied and really beat them. I've, I've seen once, I've spoken to them on here sometimes, privately. <coughs> you know, my wife, always, always getting drunk, starting on me, and, and he showed me on his back, she threw a red, she threw a full pan of chips all down his back, and both bed, all his fucking backs, like all bubbled. Really bad, I said, you, listen brother, he's away from her now, I said, you need to get away from her, you're going to have dead. He said, like, she's like that, little skinny thing, but he, he, he's one of them who's got a big, like, he hasn't got a heart to fight back. He just like takes it, you know, a very submersive person. <coughs> so don't fight back, just leave her. <coughs> I'll go to the council over there and get help. She won't go, he said. I said, well, you can't stay there. Said, if that would have been your eyes, your face, your, your eyes have just popped. You'd have been blind for the rest of your life. So anyway, he called me back. 
few more times. He's, and about a month after, he said, I've moved out. I've just moved into my mum's. Uh, and my mum's got an injunction on it. I said, well, that's the best thing to do. If anyone's getting bullied at home, the wife's getting beat up. Or they try to say I was beating them up. Fucking pathetic. I was beating them up all, all the time. And they, that was the time when they said the little rat, the little rat, the little rat was trying to get people on and called me. He was going to pay them £150 each. should give them an eighth of coke. Or it was two hundred fifty pound with a coke, and one hundred fifty pound each. I can't remember what it was. And he was, he was going to the people's house just trying to get them. So anyway, it came out they were going to come on. So our friend, the vet was, I love you, vet. She's like the best fighter in the of that area. Went and seen the people. What are you fucking doing, doing this? It's not me. He said, I'm not even. I've never even. He said, he come on the phone. He went to, went to Brian. I told him a few things. He said, what? Well, it's all in the past, whatever happened, and this that nearly said there. Uh, what he's saying, what Brian's supposed to have done something that's rubbish, absolute rubbish. He said he wants me to go and say and make lies up. I'm not going to tell lies about people, and my mum's not going to tell lies either. So at the end of the day, they end up saying, Get me said, Wemma, could you come and see us? He gives her a cuddle. So he said, Look, I promise you, I'm not going there, but he keeps coming. I'll fight Brian Cockley. He went, You wouldn't last five seconds, what Brian Cockley said to him. You wouldn't last. Five seconds with him, he destroyed you. That kind of, you're, you're talking shit. You're talking completely shit. You you live in a little village in fucking Carlisle. We live in fucking big towns down here. Hundreds of thousands of people in each town. Like about half a million people in the area where we live. You're in a little village, and you you can't even fight the best fight in your little, the little village. You fucking idiot. He said to him, he said, stop phoning me 10, 15 times a day and tell that idiot fake author to stop phoning me as well because he's a clown. So they came, like I said, he was the contact to him and went to see him. He said, I went around and threatened him. Like he said, it was when Mandy Jameson, I went to Liverpool. And the threat, no, I've phoned her from here. And threatened her in Liverpool, Mandy Jameson, come on to him. Brian's a lovely man. I've spoken to him. He never threatened me. Emma's like a sister to me. He used to call me cousin for seven, seven years. And she lived in Liverpool. We used to work together and everything. She's like, she's like a sister. And he went on the phone. We're on the phone about two hours talking, laughing and joking. Then we come on and did the live. She went, Stop saying Brian Cockrell and Emma Cockrell threatened me and was like a sister to me. I'm telling you, my lovely, I went down there to get you DBS, not DBS, so the Sarah's law, and the police. I'm not going to say everything because I don't know the 99th campaign I'm going. I can't divulge everything because I've been given it. There will be in the police station. So she said, You were a significant risk to women and children. And what did you do? You were at my house all day doing the 89th campaign in front of two of my children. Anything could have happened, the cop said. You're not allowed to be near women and children. She said, Don't ever come back to Liverpool because the next time you come to Liverpool, you won't get out of Liverpool alive. You won't get out of Liverpool. I've seen it for that. She said, You won't get out of Liverpool. In other words, you, in other words, you won't go back. So he never went back there. And that's when Dodgy Dave realised because Dave was helping him. And ice, ice cream's his missus, I think it is. And then four dozen said, Brian, he's fucking wrong, and you're right. He's fucking all along. He's been, you've been right. He's fucking wrong. I was getting phone calls up here from Carlisle, you see, you know, like when I was in jail up that way. I was in, I was in a place called Havrick. Really rough, rough jail. For all the night, you led all the Manchester lads, all, all the gangsters from Manchester, Liverpool. They put you there because it's in the middle of nowhere. It's like, like the fucking seagulls are like that, they're huge. It's where their nuclear nuclear power stations up there. Is it Cel Selby or some Selby? Some sort of what it's called, not Selfield or some fucking I don't know if it's that one or if it's a different one. I don't know the name of it. There's a power station up there. And these seagulls are huge and they reckon it's off the nuclear power fucking, you know, the, the wastage and stuff. But that's what it's off up there. Been there for years. Yeah. My big boss, yes, mate. I wish you when I'm uh, God. Being with you, yes, thank you very much. God be with you all because He's there with us, even if you don't believe in Jesus. Jesus believes in you, and He died on the cross for all of us, He died for our sins. And when He was on the cross, God was going to send a hundred thousand million angels, whoever, down to destroy every one of us, all humans. And He went, Father, He looked up, and He went, Father, it started to rain because He was like lightning went mad. Obviously, was, God was angry. Anyway, was drizzled out, and he went, Father, forgive them, for they not know what they do. Obviously, we they didn't know what they were doing, so they crucified him on the cross. So he died for our sins, and then he risen and come back, because only him could do that, because he's obviously, he's the Lord God. 
Some people might not believe in it, but believe me, but where did we come from then? Can anyone explain where we come from? Can any one person really explain where we come from? Can't do it. The, the brainiest people on the planet can't do it. The cleverest men ever lived can't do it. There's got to be a divine intervention. There's got to be something that we haven't got the capability and the brains to work it out. We haven't got that. We aren't, we aren't, we're not like super beings. That's what the Lord is. So there's got to be, God's got to be an alien because he's not from this planet. He's from another, he's from another somewhere else. They say the heavens, don't they? So if he's from out of this planet, he's an alien. It's as simple as that. So they could have been around for aliens who made us. God could be the uh, that could be the uh, the answer to it being an alien. But I spoke to Tony Green, don't go to church with tomorrow. If you're watching Tony, love you. Then he's helped us a lot through this. Stop the violence. The old bride would have fucking destroyed these people. You know, the old night. And I've kept back, kept back and kept back, you know, but getting bigger now, getting stronger now, getting fitter now. This tops the three extra lives and it's skin tight on me. So when a piss coming on, I was using a, just a normal, I was on a medium top, but I lost, I lost six though. I put three stone back on. My stomach, you showed me stomach last week, it's like a pancake, it's flat, it's flat, it's flat as hell. So the fitness is coming back, the strength is coming back, even my hands coming back. I did, I went out yesterday driving, only went to the shops, got the air cut. And uh, the air cut, what's left of me here? <laughs> My hair cut and uh, got my hair done and had a good laugh with the last lads and then the hairdressers and it was uh, Polish lad, lovely lad. If you're watching, Jim, I lad in there who talked all the time, he's a lovely lad who does my hair for me. He said, There's a hand with hairdressers and he only bowed, just near, just near the Dago's uh, pizza shop. Lovely people, yeah. Always got, he's got all the 80s music on. He's about, he's about I think Jim's about 48, I think that. And his wife got the same age, lovely people come and see us and have a drink sometimes. They were mortal drunk, him and his missus the other day. <laughs> I've ever seen them. <laughs> they couldn't even put the stuff in the machine, you know, when you get your card and that. But that drunk, they pop mortal drunk, they've been drinking all day. But he's really nice, he's got loads of energy, Jim. Lovely man, he, he loves both terriers. He's from uh, South Africa, South Africa. Josh Ungumbabi, and from South Africa. Yeah, he was telling me about, he said his bulb terrier was that mental, he said. We were in South Africa, trying the crocodiles in the river and come out. And he said, the dog was trying to fight the crocodile, they wouldn't have had a chance. But they're just that mental, they're just not scared enough of them bull terriers, he said. He said, they were trying to have a fight with the shit, about four foot crocodile fives, four foot five foot, he said. Been eating edibles, well, well done, well done, Peter. Yeah, the box. Peter the Vox, he from France. By the book, France, kids can say, we were myself. Peter saying, you know, oh, you can keep speaking French. <laughs> I like that one they do, and it only flows in all. <laughs> so, so the girls at the pub, the young girl at the pub, about 25, she sat there with a the bag on. The bag's there like that, and she sat there. Beautiful, blonde girl, blonde, from she was. But what are you doing here? She, she said, oh, I need taxi to go. She said, she, 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 German accent. So he says, so she's you know, talking in German and they can't understand that. So Uncle Albert says, I was in the war, I can speak German. So they bring him forward, put him there, and he sat there, Jeff, and he goes, What is your name? <laughs> what? He tell the voice, and you take the piss, but what is your name? <laughs> Fucking hilarious. I think that's the funniest show it's ever been. Only feels I don't think there'll ever be another one like it. I've never seen a bad episode on there. Absolutely great. And I used to love, I used to love um, porridge. Porridge on a Friday night was on marvellous. Do you know what? There's no, no kids staying with the mum and dads now. We were 15, 14, 15. 13, 14, 15. We've got the youth club, come back. We don't be sat watching the telly till like maybe 12 o'clock at night. And then we'd end up, dan, 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 Where were first? Frankenstein or something would come on and say, on a Saturday night, we watched Match of the Day with Jimmy Hill with a big chin. We watched that and obviously I'm, we looked at like Man United because my uncle played for them and uh, he played for the Butter as well. And I was skinny, my brother passed away, he loved, he loved at Liverpool, but Liverpool were the best team then. And we used to all watch it and take the piss out of each other. It was just all lap under in the house, like the uncle stayed. So it was like eight of us in the house all on the lap. And we'd all watch like uh, the generation game there where they'd show you something, be like saying, showing you how to make a pot, the clay, get the clay and they'd have this thing 
going around and show you how to make a cup or something. So then the person who's the expert would say to the contestant, right, you're going to be <laughs> all over the fucking place and we just be creased up laughing at it. It's no fun like that now. And there'd be like what, eight members of the family and all, all us, like say, they have chips or something, right? Chip butties or something. You'd be eating chip butties, watching it. A cup of coffee or something, or a cup of tea, or whatever you have, orange and water, whatever. You'd just be watching that on the night. And then you'd have a treat like the ice cream man would come round. But we couldn't afford like an ice cream each because it was too dear. So my mum used to say, Brian, go and get like, say, two pounds with the ice cream. Well, then there's two pounds, you've got fucking loads. And we knew the ice cream man. So he used to put loads on the square, you think, hundreds of thousands and nuts and all that stuff. But you come in, you'd, you'd get like, scoop each in a, in a in a in a glass about that big half a pint and you'd get your she'd have like pop to put up like cream soda or something all get like a cream soda and that'd be like a treat for the saturday night friday or saturday night and you might you might get like a mars bar and a pack of crisps or something that would be for the saturday night you watch the film horror films yeah it was class them days they've gone i wish i could go back to them days there was no Van said is now, where you see all over the world. There was no, there was people having fist fights. You never heard of anyone getting stabbed to death. You never heard, you didn't hear many kids getting raped like they do now and groomed. With, that's the only thing with computers, isn't it? It's, it's, a, it's like a cesspool of evil, isn't it? Now, somebody said to me that the devil doesn't exist. Well, it does exist. This is the devil 999. Was it, was it, is it 666? Is it the devil 666? 666 is the devil. Is the fucking computers because they're on there pretending to be 14 and 12 year old kids and grooming them. I think if they get caught for that, I honestly think they should be like fucking really, really punished like with them. Maybe a maybe a, a tag on the feet, on the legs, or wherever where they go, where there's, where there's like schools. And they do that now. They're certain pedophiles, they get a tag on, but they get like say four year jail, they do two year jail and get out of the show. And they'll be on tag for two years, maybe a year on tag. But if they go near a school, like 50 metres from, I think it's 50 metres from a school, it'll go off. Like beep, 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 because how was that one before? And the teacher went, oh, I'm going to have to go because I was talking to the teacher. And uh, she went, oh, so I went straight in there before the police. I said, what's happened there? She went, such a such a file, it must be in the area because the, the alarm's gone off for, for, the, for, the, what it was, for them. But I thought, what a brilliant idea. What a brilliant idea. Marvellous. Big, they've all got big gates up now in the schools, haven't they? Like, like the old gates, we never had that type of thing. But I think we were more more, more savvy then, more more aware of things like that. Your mum and dad were more cautious then. With you, you had to be in when the street lights went on. If you went there, them street lights were on. That was the code. Oh, fuck me, I'm trying to kill me. I'm, 30 minutes late, because that be, you went in, that was like a, your mum would start worrying, your dad start worrying about things. So you had to be in for the street lights being on. As soon as they went on, both you were home. And you used to get punished, and I'm not mean punished, you'd get in, get the good eye was now, you get over that in a couple, couple of minutes, right? Staying in for, for the two days. Saturday, Friday, and Saturday, no telly downstairs, everyone's downstairs watching telly you're upstairs. You're in your room. I've got a little tiny bunk bed made of wood. Another bunk bed for Bobby, say. And then you've got these fucking sheets that are green, blue, and white, I think they were. You put them on your bed, and then you've got a, a, a big, a hairy fucking blanket, like old army blankets that were horrible in the 1980s, 70s, and 80s. And then you got a candlewick, candlewick quilt. It was like a, it was like a cloth thing. It was mad. Horrible, horrible things. They'd be itching them in the night with a fucking blanket on, and you throw it off, and they'd be freezing. It's a fucking nightmare. There was no heat like there's now. Just can go coal fires there, and we used to have to go pinch the coal off the top of the where the railway lines used to come. It used to be rail lines where I lived, right at the very top. We used to sneak up about eight o'clock in the night, be a bloke on there like a bloke watching well, what's going on. And what happens is it was a steelworks next to it, so the milk and lard that would come through in the steelworks, they poured it into the big train things and. Where they went with it, but they also used to have coke, coke, not that coke, but coke, like coke, like fire coke, like to bed. And when they would come through the train, would deep bang, do that like that, and then all the coke, loads of coke would fall off the sides of it. So we'd go up with like a, a plastic bucket, we'd get because you remember the metal one, you could eat it mile away. I could go up with a, a, a bag, like a sack. I mean, I'll probably go 
then I was skinny with them. Who keep an eye on him? Anyone's coming? And then, and then, if anyone comes and say, "Are we? Are we? Are we?" Lassie, we had a dog called Lassie. Lassie, where are you? Come on! I like pretend you're looking for the dog, so we'd have to hide all the way with the cork, cork. and then we sneak back down, give it our mum. She'd be over the door, like two big, two big bags. We said, "No, I'll get some more, mum." It's only, it's only that such and such one. I'm sorry, he's, he's, he's never, he's, he's in there, hut all day, all the hut all night, doesn't come out. Probably drinking in there. We'll go back up three or four times. There's enough call for a week. Our mum be buzzing. And then if we didn't get that, if we, if they, if we couldn't get that, sometimes you couldn't get it. Because they'd have like really top ones on, you know, like ones who could catch it. You were a kid, like 11, 10, 11 year old. So we used to uh, go to the beach. You go to the beach, you used to get a sea coat, you rake it up, put it in their seat sacks, and then put it on the bike. It was a nightmare pushing up the bank all the way. There. Going down was a nightmare, coming, coming, coming back. Down the hills, and I you have the call, and then you're trying to slow the bike down. You're skidding, sliding on the bank, on the embankments, on the road. It was a road at the back of Arlipool, just off Westview Roads on the front. Now at the back was the old cemetery, so we've got a big old cemetery there. You went through the cemetery, and you come to the beach, and you can go down there. It was a place called the Oddies. We used to go there. It's open like a, a white powdery stuff, but it would turn a liquid would come in. It was, it was warm. But like people used to sit in it. You sit there like a springs. I don't know fucking what it was. Maybe that's why I was just trying to make me toxic stuff. I mean, eat toxic, <laughs> breathing toxic, you know what I'm saying? Maybe that's why I got so big. Things like that in the old days were totally different. I mean, I used to love it when there's parties on Christmas, New Year. You get the lemonade bottles, and you get two pence back, I think it was, for a bottle. A Mars bar was only three pence. So you like 10 bottles, but like 20, 20 pence. What's that? 20 pence. 20 pence, you could go to the pictures for 15 pence. Could go to the bus for three pence. We never got buses anywhere. We walked everywhere. Our skateboard, we just got a skateboard. I remember getting the yellow skateboard. The dogs you got a wooden, wooden one. And we had orange, orangey red wheels. Skateboard all over down the town. So we used to go up where the clansmen is. I pulled the clansmen because they used to go under the ground, like a tunnel under the ground to the other side. So we could go shh, all the way around the tunnel down. And get come walk back up the other end and go back all the way around the other end. We should play, play down there for hours and hours. Your kids now play. I feel sick. Can't take medication every time I come on now. There, I feel sick. <sighs> Doesn't that make me hot? Yeah, so we play, we, we're all like that. We're all skinny fuckers. I was like, him, no Kess. Come on, Kess. Come on, Kess. A little skinny kid. That was like me. I was like a bag of bones. I was about fucking seven stone. I had legs like Angela Ripley. My dad used to say, come on, you, because he used to play in the football team. He said, you've got legs like Angela Ripley, like the other woman, like little woman's legs, little skinny legs, fucking, they weren't like that in the end, Dad. And he said, I can't believe how big you like that so compared to when you were a kid. Hard draft it was training, though. Training since you were 13 year old. Never took a drug or a drink. Never had nothing, smoked. Never took uh, anything till I was nearly 27. To be free to me at my number, it's getting it off him. Oh, no, that's your, your number, Peter. Uh, lamb's nice. I like lamb bone of me. I think that's really nice. There's a place up here that the lads who have it, Colin Tyson, you know, the little uh, Pakistani lad, a couple of the Indian lads run it. And uh, it's blessed to me every day pure just it's slaughtered with you know the day and then they bless it straight away and they bring it straight up everybody who's indian or pakistani and most of the white lads who want all go to that the one tea they'll be bad it's the best one the best one tea's had it's absolutely beautiful food that as well and the man that the people are lovely and now when you speak to them that the spotless absolutely the thing about indian people and pakistani people the spotless like you go in their houses there's not a crumb anywhere you go in every every fucking place, every it, there's Pakistani people and Indian people. The windows is spotless, the floor is spotless, the toilet, there's not a bit of mark mark in the toilet or nothing. You never never seen out there, he pots in the sink, all the shoes are lined up. They're like proper, proper, really, really clean people. You know, people saying that the this and that and the other. No, they're not they're absolutely spotless. They're, everyone I've ever been in the house, I've never seen. They're all very polite, very, very polite. The kids don't speak out of turn. I got a friend who are Indians and Pakistani lads. Come and be proud with you, Big Brian. The kids, I am. Oh, well, Brian, how are you doing? And they're all six or seven kids, and they're all making a fuss of me because they love me because 
my little mate's pretty great lad as well. He's, uh, I used to go and see him. I haven't seen him for a while, but he's, he's got like six kids. They're all older now, 18, 19, 20. Well, they're all, and all these Indian Pakistani kids, they've all got really good educations. The mum and dads make sure they go to school. They're really, they're, they're strict with them, very strict. But when you see them becoming doctors and not nurses and lawyers and barristers and things, you think, good on you, good on your kids. But of course, with a must screen it. And it's really bad. So you've got to be in the sun today. I've been from there. I keep burning myself in the sun. Maybe I try and put my eyes a bed. I wonder if it's fucking sun burning my eyes. They're not bad tonight. She's giving me that stuff. I just feel sick. I'm really sick. I'm taking the tablet. Easy, I called. Leading out here. I called Lamaprosco before. And you take all of them off, camels or an iprox and they make it really bulk. I just had some um, early run there, but before I come on here, I thought for 35, about 40 minutes ago, if it fits, you feel sick, these help you, your uh, digestive stuff, you've got to throw it up to everything. Because you get them on the fact, I took that on the toe and I threw everything up a whole lot. The first few times I took it, I didn't realise how bad they were. He went to the doctor, said, look, I've been bad on the med medications. He went, i give you something. He's an Indian doctor, he's lovely. You always fluff a phone up. This is come around. Come, you come around. Come around, big bright. Put <laughs> big bright. I should say, but he could be bright. Big bright. Lovely man, I've been there for 20, 25, 30 years. I've been there 30, 30 odd years. I've been up here 31 years. I've never had a problem with one person up here. Not one single problem. Right from that asshole puppy when you said we all we all know he did it. Even the cops said when the company said, We know it's him, we just can't prove it. Which we know for a fact it's him. The screenshots of the kids we've got, but we can't prove it. Because they have the screenshots of him saying, do this and do that, and we'll pay you five hundred pounds, another five hundred pounds, a thousand pounds, a thousand. It cost him over two thousand pounds to sell he could. And it cost me nothing for the windows to get fixed. Got got the glass, I've got the glass there, and I've got the put them in for this. I've still put them in, I just left them. Left them there, but yeah, wasn't wasn't about the uh, police. But, I mean, I call the police. Don't get me wrong, because they have been on the me in the past, and how they arrested me was disgusting. But I'll get a massive lump out of that, massive. And the, and been on <coughs> investigation for fourteen months with the amount of abuse we've had and the amount that's been given. Like I say, the, the paladin here. We've even had cease and desist letters sent from the courts to stop the stop. If I'd ceased to this, this said from solicitors to him to stop, it won't stop. So all that's when they went mentioning the Jew thing, when the cockroaches have done everything they have, they've tried every single thing. They've tried to stop, they've tried to we've had we were out church leader, Tony Grange going to see him. We had Bram and somebody else to go and see look, just leave us alone. We'll stop mentioning you, you'll stop mentioning us. Tony got back, it's all sort of went, he said they were crying their eyes out the pet the, the petrified, this, that and the other. I said, Tony, look, so I showed him the computer, he went, him and made him a burger cheese big burger cheese and lettuce and onions and stuff and a bit like five guys it was and he went oh brilliant that's marvelous that. so I, I, i've had mine so i said yes love your red sauce there oh cheers dry put it on went to eat it i said look anyway dave daily food and dave daily started telling the stories he went i don't believe this and he said well he's done the deal and well, he's done this one well, he's done that. He went, i can't believe this so then he sat there and went well it's sort of now anyway he said well I'm going to show you something. I said, so I'm going to show you that I said, while you've been there, we've had about 40, 50 texts. Um, praying hands and then take the piss and like, no, loads of shit like that and loads of abuse. And he went, he started looking at it, about the grip and the dog and all that. He went, I don't believe this. He said, I, I, I can only say, because he's a lovely man, I can only say that I think that's money, bro. I really do. It's the only thing I can come from. He says, because no one speaks like that normal. It's, it's demonic. He said, I think he needs to go to the church to get uh, baptized in the water uh, and in the sea or something and get try to get out of the evilness out of him. But we've try, tried to help him. Say, why don't you go and we'll get you sorted out? We'll do this. We've tried to help. We've offered like all the branches and everything for him. We've tried to do everything, but he has to be his way. Even when his wife was supposed, supposed to have had cancer, he went, Look, I know we're out of the heads, but I, I don't wish anything bad on your wife. Me and Emma, uh, hope she's going to be okay. 
you can beat this. I won't oh, mention the name, but you can beat this, uh, whatever her name is. And I said, uh, God bless you. We're going to pray for you. She went, how dare you? How dare you wish me well with my cancer? And I thought, this shows people what she is, fucking around the bend. So if somebody, if somebody said, look, you say, thank you. All right, you know, right. Thanks, thanks for the uh, comment. You just move on, wouldn't you? You wouldn't, you wouldn't say to someone, how dare you thank, how dare you go to pray for me? And how dare you, you, uh, you, you, you mentioned my cancer and said, I hope you get well. well what did you want me to do? You say, I hope you die. And I'm like, right, right, just come back and tell the truth. But you can't, you can't win with some people. Denny old, Denny old, Esther old school, think about you all day to day. You're in my prayers, you're in my thoughts. I'm going to get you right. I'm going to get you right. I know I am. Oh, where's fucking Ruin Karad? There's fucking two of them there. The right little lamb. Well, to me, the, to me, they're like little lambs. I've lost them in the field they're like fucking a shepherd. I feel like that when people get low when their fucking heads are gone, the fries. I know for a fact, real to deal, to deal tell you how good I am. Where's he gone, my brother? Where's he gone? He better not have left me already. I can't see him. Timmy B, is he gone? Timmy B, is he in the shot? Timmy B will tell you how much I know about psychology and stuff. He must have gone, Timmy. Yeah, it's just now. We had, we had a great way. He was here at the kind of four, three, four, five hours. He was at the house. He loved it. I don't want to go home now. I said, I'll stay there if you want. <laughs> he had to get back to work, he said. Yeah, he was really nice there, Timmy. And he's, he's seen everything, what we were going through. And I can't believe it. He said, have, have you told us it? But physically seen it, it's totally different. He said, absolutely disgusting. He said, he, don't even, he said, Timmy said, you wouldn't even think that, Brian, would you? I said, no, my dad, Timmy's at the bottom. So Timmy said to me, as a new human, as a normal human being, wouldn't think that way. But you would certainly not say it, even if you thought it, you'd feel embarrassed, wouldn't you? I went, yeah, you wouldn't say it, mate. Old school. Old school was there. Uh, you just like say so you go. I've got houses. I went to tax this lad. He had twenty grand with the court coming because the lawyer tipped me off, and he had twenty grand. He had twenty grand in the house, but the twenty grand with the court lad was in on it, but it wasn't real coke anyway. He, he, he wouldn't have got caught anyway. So I was going to take the coke off him, but it wasn't real coke. I didn't take twenty grand off him, so I got the both of them. So I went to the door, and it was a gate, like a baby gate. And it was a house like that where you go there, left to the kitchen, right to the living room, just a little council house, about two bedroom council house. And then all of a sudden, I seen a look through the fucking idiot had the money on the table, like in a little, like a, in a, a living room, it was like a living room with a, a dining, dining room, it was just been living room, dining, dining room in one. So I looked at it, I thought, the money there, I'm going to go. And I thought, no, a three year old, four year old come out and looked at me, I went, Hey, yeah, uh, you're right. I just walked down the path. So I said, What down the path? He went, What are you doing, Cockrell? I said, There, no, I said, There, just to get about it. Anyway, he went, Oh, so you ran in the house, you come back out with a fucking gun. I went, Oh, then you that gun. Come on, then, come on. Screamed at him. Anyway, he shot me. I went, hit like that. And I went, and jumped, got a flight. I went, like that. Anyway, it just landed on me and I hit me top and seen something form. It felt the floor. It was a yellow pellet. It was a little fucking BB gun. It looked like it was looked like a better nine millimeter. He may hit me, I thought, I'm not looking for a hole in me, no, obviously with the fright, there was no bang or anything. Anyway, he, he ran in the house. I just walked away. I thought, you're not going to go in the house with his kids. And anyway, he told me, we said, oh, there's 17 of us in the Jeep. I went, it must be a fucking big Jeep you're in. No trying to scare me. I said, come and meet me at the Outer Lodge now. I'm there with my brother. Never turned up. He said, oh, we'll meet you tomorrow. So Kev, Richie, Richie, Richie Mews, got older than, it was, it was about 12 of them. He said that they're too careful to bring them for us. They've been up for me, I've been at the Buckingham Lodge. I mean, my mum lives across the road, I've been looking out the window and nobody turned up. So we kept saying they're coming, they never turned up. We're going to get in this fight, fight with some boxer. He was a pro boxer. He was only, he was a fucking, he was only about a nine, eight stone nine. So I said, how the fuck's he going to fight me, eight stone nine? So I'll just throw him over the fucking, over the, over the back of my fence or something. Nine stone, eight stone. So anyway, of course, to fight him on the beach called the Blue Lagoon, where the cops can't see it. It's a beach, but it's, it's like all sand dunes and stuff and, and bits of um, bushes you can't see. So we, we used to go there for straighteners. <coughs> so I'm, I'm wait, goes to fight the next day, goes to war. The lad told me, went, look, if you come to my house, I'm going to get the police on you. I mean, well, wait a minute, you had 17 people in the jeep last night. We're not, 
we haven't got no one now. He said, yeah, that like just want to fight you the boxer. Yeah, because what's happened? You've been full of coke, haven't you? You think you're 10 men because you've had a fight. 11, 10 lads or whatever he's with you. No, you're on your own. I'll get the police on you if you come to my house anyway. I met him in jail later on. He was in their home house. I went up to him. I said, you all right? He went, yeah. I said, yeah. And we all right. Come shake hands with me. Shook hands with me. And he said, he was the gym order in the gym. So I got on with him after that. He said, I, I couldn't believe you ran at me when I had the gun. I thought, anyone else would just run away. Yeah. And the other things we've got on that idiot saying, um, he had the soap, them, them thingy tapes. Remember the uh, stuff about Viv Graham? So I've got that as well. I told the cop, I said, he's been telling everyone I was, I was involved in the murder of Viv Graham. I only ever met Viv Graham once, twice in Durham uh, when I was in Rwanda in 1998. And Viv was in, the, I was in one wing on the top one B wing, and he was on B wing as well, but he was a cleaner. He, he run the jail. And I went, oh, he said, fucking hell. He said, who's that? And I come in, so the screw screw went, oh, he's from Middlesbrough, I think he's called, he's Brian Coppola. I went, oh, he's the one who had the fight with Lee Duffy, isn't he? And yeah, he said, fuck it, look at that, he can't, he can't get in. Things want to go inside of He's that big, look at the his shoulders, you know. Screw some lab, I had to give me his clothes down the reception, he said. His fucking legs are like that, he said. He said, like a fucking, I've never seen how I like his fucking legs are like fucking elephants. His legs are huge. He said, the fucking, you couldn't imagine how big his legs are. He said, it's when he obviously was getting dressed, he'd, he'd give you a stuff, he'd be turning around that, his leg, side, side, bicep, just look like that, big massive chunk of muscle. He said, monstrous yeah, everywhere in your arms chest back and traps you over here he said i can see you can see from here so we're not a big lad i went all right mate didn't know who he was so love lovely man he seemed anyway i went up to him i think he was about 15 so at the time he looked and he went oh, you're a big lad uh get yourself get yourself get your induction done I, i'm the gym already as well he said i do this i'm the gym he said okay down the gym you can train with me i'll train you We'll push each other. Oh, thanks very much. I appreciate that. So I went back to the cell. And then I came out the next day and seen him again. And he just waved at me. And later on, he got shot to death in Newcastle in um, 1993 or 94, I think it was. I think, I can't remember the date. I was with Eddie Buell. I was in a rave. Two, 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 two and a half thousand people in there. So they never, ever questioned me. So the so-called author, oh, do you know, I said, listen, you could go here forever. I said, it's been something like about 2,000 people questioned or blamed for the, the murder. I said, I don't think they'll ever catch the person that's gone from that long now. And the, the people who are supposed to have done it, people said, I'm not here anymore. So that, that, that room was about as well. The person who was supposed to have done it died. So sadly, got shot there uh, on New Year's Eve, it was. And we were in the rave because the Basil Man was me and John Lee, I think, was this Paddy Paddy. Paddy uh, Carthy was with us, Angus Duper, all the lads from the Paw Trap were there, Dave Wood, yeah, Ken, all them lot were with us, Tracy, and Tracy, Steve Boots, his missus, and Sharon, and all them were there at the rave. It was, it was about 100 of us all in the rave. And somebody come in and said, oh, he's been shot, it was early hours of the morning, we came in, because the rave was open until like, the next day, so to 12, to, I, I'd go in and I'd go in and I'd be like, say, Six, seven o'clock, I'm going to show him. I said, does everyone want to stay up a little bit longer? And so I'll go on the way. I'm asking you, does anyone? And you'll go, yeah. I said, yeah, that's not loud enough. And I'll go, do you want to stay up longer? How long do you want? Two hours, three hours? Oh, two days, jump this out. <laughs> so I said, look, so we'll do another four hours. So that'll be over 20 hours. They went, yeah. It was like a bank holiday like this. It was the same bank holiday Easter. It's weird, that it was a Monday. Monday, yeah, because uh, the fest opened, they only got 36 people there, because that stopped. That they came from Newcastle with Ernie Buke down. I didn't know Ernie, but I got to meet him through uh, Tumble. So Ernie was running the door. Well, I, I was outside from the corner, stopping everyone. I told everyone in the pubs, don't go in that fucking club. I'll fall out with you. And no one turned up. 36 people. That's all they got. So they, had, they got a message to me through Ernie to Tomo, and Tomo would come see me. Went down and seen him. Went in the office. A little fattish one, and then another one, skinny, skinny bloke millionaires they have 300 houses so they said look what do you want deal to to put to let us do the club down here I went so we'll give you 600 pounds we give it any went no no i said what does the dj get he said a pound a man well i'll do the same deal as him he went he said yeah well, i said the same now you come on i'll fill this place if i don't fill this place right you don't have to give me a penny right deal if i don't fill this to the brim right you don't have to pay me over 2,000 people turned up. 
and that was like the Friday, the Saturday, the Sunday and Monday they stayed. But they never opened on the Sunday. A lot of people got buses down and stayed on the buses and you know, like fucking went to hotels and stuff. But it was four days uh, going in there in the rear. It was fucking chocolate. So what I did, we used to do a lettuce on the doors when I went to Leo's. We used to run the doors. So what you have to do is you have to make sure for the fire brigade, the safety of people, you have to have so many feet in that between people. So a fireman can walk in and go, this is it, this is it. close down. There's too many people breaking off. They're all touching each other. Like everyone's stuck together. Like when you want the bar for a drink and you're all stuck together, when you like that, all around the place, if I, if I even shut it down, because this could be, people would fall on top of each other. If there was like a stampede, people could get killed. So they used to get, used to get a clicker, do that noise. One in and somebody would go out, three out. So one would have the clicker to let them in, one would have the clicker to let them out. So you know the door out, just a clicker to let you know. So then it says 300 in, because I think the limit was 500 and the was. And but he took down he'd have like five fifty and get away with it a few times, very right on the board, and then he got nearly got the club shut down. And then they used to have to do that as well. So they've come in young masters about sixteen, but you can't tell, can you, when they're fucking all dressed up. You don't kill she's sixteen or fucking twenty one. So you have to be sixteen, you have to be eighteen, I think, to get in. I'm not sure, I think it was eighteen to get in. No, maybe sixteen. So you have to come the door about four lasses. You can always tell why they give it away. They all start giggling. You can tell if the, the, the like say 20 odd or 6, 20, 15, 6, 30, 40, 15, they all fucking <laughs> they start that fucking stupid laugh and it does me fucking head in. So one come in and she had a license, she went, I said, Do your license? Right. And what was your offence for? Was it for speed and you got three tick three points? Or was it for a ball tire? She went there, uh, a ball tire? Wrong. Oh, yeah, 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 it was speeding. Wrong. You haven't got no points. <laughs> Just tricked her, you know, pretended. And she went, all right, you've got me. She said, anyway, give it a I said, how old is she? At 13. I thought, I thought you were. I just knew by your face. But it's when they start giggling, laughing, you can tell they're only kids. I've got a ghost gun. My mate, proper clock. Clock nine millimeters. Well, I used to have the Brownings. I know we, I would do a club. We had, we had a little carry on one, and then this um, came from 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 from, from, from Grove Hill, where. And uh, we came in about five or six. We were known these family. Um, Steve Sharon, them can't stand them. So we're known as family for for they used to carry like you know. Do you know when you get your cricket stumps? You know the ones where you put the bales on. The little, the stick, they had them type. They're a little bit thinner. Like oak, not oak. I know with oak. So they used to have a lot of them up there, a jacket about that long, and then they in for the fuckers. So it was Henry Warren was boxing for them, British heavyweight title, not British middleweight title, as we were all that uh, loads of lads, loads of the tyres as lads. We were all out, travelling lads. We were all in their pub called, um, what was it called, fucking hell? There's a fight in the night, I'm coming in, there's a fucking club now. Oh, it's doing it, oh, it's just two, there's one in Red, the same name. You know, just fucking does your head when you can't think. So anyway, we're in there. So we goes in this. We, we, we're in this pub and we're, we're sitting watching the boxing supposed to be coming on shit like that. So anyway, we're having a drink. The next minute we goes to Birch's, was a really rough pub and stopped. And it was owned by an ex copper called Peter, Peter Fox. We used to have another nightclub called Foxes in Hartley Pool. Peter the Mark Pool and Northern London. So we goes in. What four of us? And my mate Smalley. Stephen, if you're watching, love your son. Uh, his sister Alison, lovely people. Uh, got, on, got on with them, really good people. Ended up giving somebody a bat in there who, had, who burned Alison's son's face. She was fucking burning with a cigarette. Jackie Bassett told me and Big Bud Armstrong getting the wood kicking in the, in the yard. Fucking scumbag. Burn the little kids back with a cigarette. Fucking scum, the one putting the one, killing the one with the guns. So anyway, I'm there. Uh, it goes in. So the ghost to go in the club. Anyway, they're still in the doorway. I, I said, what are you doing? You've you, you battered up the, the beat up Jed Small, which was Smalley's uncle. Battered fuck up with the sticks, all his head. He was only 40 at the time. Made a right mess of him. So we went, I said, what are you fucking doing this now? Fucking hell, you the fuck are you to come in my club and start being a clever club? So they run upstairs. So it was like downstairs, you can go in that way, the pub and that. And then on the left, you can go up the stairs. 
So they run up the stairs, so we come up the stairs, and me and Speedy together, another two lads. So Speedy's got the nine millimeter gun on him, Browning, allegedly. So he goes up the steps, turns round, and then they've come to the end of the steps then. So what they are what they're on now is all night clubs have got it, you've got to have steel stairs to get on the roof. So they're, they're on the steel stairs. So I went up there and you would one's it right the fuck about the nah, fucking made me dizzy. They were not out, made me dizzy. I went, oh, do you want to play a game? Do you want to play a fucking games here? Because that fucking is speed all the speed went like that, loads of it, gives it the other end. Boom, pulled it, pulled the trigger full on, right in the chest of the air. He's like that and fucking shite himself, but pulled it and pull on, pulled the trigger and couldn't jam. So I reloaded it like that and the bullet spun up in the air and fell down the steps. So anyway, the fucking block from the place of so Speedy's missus, Jane was there. Jane got the gun and put it down the top and went straight out the front door. So we had a couple of we had about 30 minutes, there's about fucking 100 place there, but whole place surrounded. And response, everything, you knew it's in the alley. So I've got that side, you come in into this alley, you come into the door this way. But it's only, it's only like two ways out there. So they blocked them off with them. Azusa troopers used to be out two to three litres, Azusa troopers, 3.2, I think they were like 3.2. Big fuck off jeeps on the front, so we've got nothing on us now. But because I've never pulled the trigger, I could stay because there's no powder residue in my hands. Anyway, they've, they've gone. Anyway, the cops have come in and arrested us. We went out, we went to the back of the van. Nobody else got arrested, so they went in and they took everyone's name and addresses and interviewed about 40 people in there and then went around their houses. So something I think it held about six, seven, eight hundred people. It was all council state people, so there we were in the cells for a couple of days. So one of the cops was coming in, he was a little fat bloke, he was an inspector. He went, Did you get was it such and such? I went, Can I eat them cuts? He said, Did they smash my windows? And my kids were in the house at the time. I said, That's wrong. No matter if you're a cop or not, you don't do that to any fucker, you don't do you don't do violence like that. I said, That's wrong. I said, He said, Did you give him a good passion? I went, no, just in case you recall me, I said, no, I never touched them. He's doing that, <laughs> doing that to me, the cops at the door, because they were hated, proper bullying cunt. And after that, me and, me and, me and Small, we went for looking for him, the main one the next day. We knew we lived in Groveville. He was on the other side, the Easter side. And we're going through, and he is. He's about 6'4", about 18, 19, so we couldn't fight. We could fight, but not, not my league. So I went, oh, then, come on. So he's run like a fucking gazelle. And I'm like a big fucking lion chasing him. But he's jumping over these fences. I thought, oh, fuck, I can't catch him anyway. As I'm running after him, I'm going down the street. But he's gone around that way, Brian. He's just gone around. He's just, he's just, he's just run past the DVD, the DVD van. Fucking people in that area hated him. Chased him out of Teesside. He went, he, went, he, went, he went to London, never come back. Never ever come back. Like gangs, all of them, all got you. So when, when, what happened to them on the roof? We were on the roof then. When the loud we get down, I said, fucking jump. So 30, 40 feet. Jump, you couldn't. One jump, one. I'll jump and I'll fucking blast you now. But I couldn't shoot because the fucking gun was jammed. So anyway, I said, jump and I'll shoot you in the head now. You come. So anyway, I made them jump off the roof. One's like hanging off and dropping off. The others are dropping off. One broke his ankle and I think one dislocated his knee. But there, no, 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 no one made a statement. They all went, the couple went, right, there must be some big toilets in, the, in that nightclub. I said, why? He said, we've interviewed nearly 400 people. They talked to over nearly 400 people about the firearm and the incident. I've never seen Brian Cockle. We can't fucking miss him. He's nearly 24 stone. The cop I said to me, he said, I don't know if I've never heard of him. So he said, there must be some big toilets. 400 people are all in the toilet at the same time. Not one person made a statement against us. But that was them coming to my manor. We were being cheeky cunts. Not going to come in my fucking uh, mad domain, fucking get away with it. So I chased him out of the area. Don't know why phone not ringing. Turn it on, Peter. <laughs> yeah, for brown and so what? Why are jams? I used to have an army life. I used to, used to look, used to strip everything down, and they used to put everything, to put everything together for him, oil them and everything. The ex army was. <coughs> he said to me, <coughs> "Where have you had it?" I said, "I had it hidden somebody's house behind them." I said, "I did it in a plastic bag, and in a, a cotton cloth bag." In cloth in a plastic bag, he went, Where did behind the radio? I mean, he said, That's what's done it. He said, It's dried up, the oil's dried up, that's why it hasn't fired. If you'd have shot it from there, you'd have just put a hole in them like that. He said, In the front, like that, and the back, it'd have been like that. Them fucking browns are massive, the, the bullets in them. He, uh, nine, nine millimeter. So he said, what, what it is with them as well, he said, If you're going to use them, just only put six or seven in. If you fill the, the right up, they jam a lot. 
with the S, his brother was at SES. He said, my brother used to work with the SES officer and they would always have a, a snub nose 36 tied to the leg just in case the brown and he said, because loads of times the brown ones used to jump, but now they've got these got nine millimeters, totally different now. Made a bit of pl like, like a resin stuff. Yeah, fucking hell. Getting a heavier than fucking meter, we're getting pulled in. So we went to this club. Of course, this club, it used to be it was a station, I think it was called. Station, it was called that because it was a train, it was like a train, it got a train. Like a carriage and made into a pub, but the pub was next door with the building. So they caught the station. So right right across the road there was to be a, a taxi ramp. So I've gone in and this lad's in there who've got Lee Duffy broke his neck with a bad banging broke his neck. I've got to see him protected him and I've gone to the club where he works and he went, the lad was in the dog next time, he went, You can't come in with the train, you don't know. And I only popped in five minutes because Gary Gary Gary, I can't say name from Getting Gary from uh, Barnaby used to be a singer, he used to always sing. We'd pop to see him because I used to give him the east, like say 100 days or something. Pop in there, so we'd give him 100 days and we'd fuck off. So we're only going in two or three minutes. So we're only in two or three minutes, mate. He's going to pop in the toilet for all right. No, you can't go in, clever cunt. But I was in half like, you know, so he's going, I was in round here. There was cameras all over. So anyway, we're with this young kid. He was in the car, he was only young, like, about 16, 17. Which made his relation, it was a little cunt, he was always getting in trouble, but we had him with us because. I know he'd be with us, but he'd be safe. So I said to him, go up there and put that fucking window through. So what we used to do, we used to have a, a load of spark plugs in the car, because when you throw a spark plug at a window, it, the, 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 the glass touches the white porcelain stuff as a chemical reaction, the window blows out, and it's like, boom, and it's been a shotgun. It's looks like it's been a shotgun. So anyway, we drove around, dropped him up about 100, two, two or 300 metres away, and he went round with a hoodie on. Throwing the, throwing the thing. Anyway, they come running around after him. Anyway, he jumped in the back of the car and laid down. And we said, wait, no, we haven't seen him. It was different the different people who ran after him. It was like, I think it was like glass collectors or something. They were only skinny little fuckers. Anyway, he went. But they knew it was us, so the cop was coming at risk of being speedy. So we got pulled in. We got done for a powder residue test, the same as the one in the nightclub we got done. Nothing come back. Powder residues, when you shoot a firearm, it sprays back with the powder on you. And you can tell if you, you fired a fire, firearm. But my thing with that would be, if I was going to do a robbery or armed robbery in my day, I would go up to Gisborough where you can shoot for so much money, say under a pound. You can go shoot for an hour or something, whatever, with a stubborn barrel shotgun. So the pounds of residue would be all over you still. If you had the same clothes on the day, same day, next day you went out and did an armed robbery and you did get involved in a gun battle. You could say, well, I was at, yesterday I was at, so can you prove it? Yeah, I'm on camera there. And there's, there's this, Gun club have been at, and then he used to have another lad. He was a farmer, and he used to go with him. So if I was going to do something like a ledger of armed robbery, I'd go out with him for the day. And he'd be shooting, and we'd, uh, we'd run about, and he'd have like a camcorder where we'd video, and he'd video me, and saying this is how you shoot and things like that. Because it wasn't allowed for you not to shoot. He had a gun license. He, he was allowed to have six weapons, six guns. He was allowed to have a license. Uh, he used to have a, he was a shotgun license as well, but it was his own land, and I was on there with him, and he was letting me shoot the gun. So if I got caught, I was on camera, and we had, we had, we had, a, we were in the house doing it, and it was, we had a newspaper on the wall, so you could see the date and time of the date of the newspaper. See the sorry, the time, we had the clock on the wall, the newspaper. We were in there, they took pictures of me, so I was stood there that day, time and date and everything. So I was in there, just proved I was there, and then the guns on the wall right next to us got a gun. We had a gun on the wall, but it was a it wasn't a real one. He had on the wall, it was too like. Silver, um, 40, 40, 40, 45 American forty five handguns. There were on the wall. He used to have three of his Dead now. He gets shot himself. Full gun. Jeff Jeff Brown. They called him. Yeah, he killed himself. He was up for a load of cocaine charges. About three, three, four weeks. He was up at that fifteen, twenty years in jail. He just he shot himself. I think he shot himself with a shotgun. Sad. He was really clever with guns. He used to uh, strip them all down. He was literally used to his game when he used to sell them to the abroad and stuff, buy like antique ones and stuff. Really, really clever man. You've got to think right before you do any jobs, anything. You've got to always have an alibi and you've got to fucking think outside the box. Think like the, I would think like a cop, I would again, 
first of all, it will be so then I went to my booking devices to find where, where bugs were in your house. And the next one would be just infiltrate somebody who you, you think's great, but they're, they're, they're going to work with the cops. So what they do, they'll get some news in the gang and they'll get them saying, right, we've got you. They might put a gun in the house, which Cleveland police used to do all the time. One of the favourite things, go in a house, raid it, and then leave a firearm under somebody's bath and then go back a couple of days, wait and find the firearm in the fucking bathroom. They've done it, done it to loads of, done it to loads of people. BJ can have it to him as well. Loads of people got that trick done. The, the ones who I took the nightclub off from Sunderland, they tried to put a good mark out, but I wasn't fucking stupid because I, was, I knew they'd done it before because Eddie told me, he said, What's them cunts? So my mate Tomo got two in ecstasy. Now at the time they were called ketamine. So anyway, he said, oh, I need a lift for it. He said, I'm supposed to go and see Brian. I went, Oh, you can use my car. They said, So they gave him the car with 200 ecstasy under the back seat. He came out the drive where the place was the um, nightclub. Drove down the road about half a mile. Woo, 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 arm response, everything pulled him over, but they went straight into the seat. Instead of looking all around the fucking car thick, I said, What did they do? He said, They went straight into the seat where the ecstasy was. I said, Well, you've been crashed up. And then he phoned me, he said, It's Jim and Carrie Robertson, that. The poor fucking snakes are both of them. They're known for doing it. So, we, what we did, I used to have Jacko, if you're watching Jacko from Dormanstown, used to sit in my car. I used to have Arnett, I used to pay him £100 a night. To drive me about in the rapes, the rapes and that, so nobody could put out big little coppers because what they can do is they can come behind you. You go in your house, you go beep, beep, and then they can go behind and they can push another button, they can get that code, beep, 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 and it goes under there, fob, and then they can go back and open your car and get in your car. They've got special leg fobs that can do it. They can do your alarm on your, on your wall. My mate, he was in the Manchester lad, he was going away. Big, big time gangster from Manchester. He had, a, he had, a, he had a, a Mercedes, and they said, "Oh, can you bring your Mercedes?" And he said, "Oh, what?" And he said, "You need there's a digit wrong or something in the in the number plate wrong or something." They said, so he brought it in, left it. The cops come in, booked it. Microphones in the headrest, camera in the camera in the front of the car, cameras in the wing mirrors, and microphones in the back. So he said, oh, we're, going to, we're going to Manchester, so we're going to Manchester, we're going to go away. So they've obviously heard him talking. But he had in his house, he had a, a camera on the wall. And when you walked in his door, you walked so many paces. And you, it, it went off like a, you went past the beam, more like a beam. You couldn't see it, it was invisible. But it went woof and it straight away started recording, like a, like a recording, like a tape recording. It would go right. Put the bulb in the kitchen, go in the living room, put it in there. But when they go in the living room, he had another one behind the mirror. He had a camera then watching them, the other one got was another. When they walked in the living room, another device where it would click it on. But the other one used to go on, he said, just if anyone started talking, automatically come on. It was a really clever, really, really multi millionaire dealer, from massive. So he's at the airport, he's going through the airport. But he had a 12 digit code on his, on his wall. We've all usually got four digits. Five, three, two, or somewhere you've got. So he's got in there, and as he's got in there, you go in, don't you, at the airport, and you put your keys on the top. When you put the keys on the top, they put, instead of that way, they put it a two way. So they can't see, they can see up with the light underneath. They put it so it's black, so they can't, you, you can't see out two way, like a two way, but you can see in, you can't see out. So they've took a picture of it, photographed it underneath. You know, can you come here and search them? As they're doing that, they put with these keys, they're fucking. Keys are on the top, and the keys have turned them round while they were messed about. So now they've got the number, whatever the fuck it was. So then we took a picture of his keys. So within ten minutes or something, he could tell they'd been in there because when he got home, the camera had come on the time and told him the time it was on, and obviously turned itself off after so long for the stuff. So nobody's talking. And then when he went to court, he produced that evidence in the courtroom. They got kicked out. Coppers, you have to have Home Office approval to do it. When they did it to me, I knew they were something. So they did it to me and my self convertible to put a, a tracking device about that big. It was like a, like a Nokia 3, 310. And they put it underneath, it was stuck underneath my car where the exhaust is. So the next day I needed to get brakes on in my car. So I was in the gym, they did it. Somebody else in the gym helped them. So I went in the gym and I went, went in, got my car. Then the ladder worked around the gym, was working with the cops. Got him, got him to work with him. 
So he then went beep beep with the car so they could go not in my car, but they went under and put a tracking device on that. I thought it was, I thought it was a well they could hear your voice, it was a tracker. Shut up. So we were going the next day to um I'm oh, sorry, we we're, we're going to get the brakes done. So I'm going to get my brakes done. A little Brian Flaherty, big Brian, and another lad from Emlington. So we put the car on the ramps, and the, lad, the little lad went underneath. He went, Is that it there? I said, Yeah. I said, You fucking bugged my car because the lad had told me that Jimmy said they made me do it. So I took it to, I went to see Kev Kilty, who was his brother's XSES. He, went, it's, it, he said, It sounds like it's a tracking device, not a, a bug. He said, So go to this shop called I Spy and Care from in Leeds. So he goes down there, and the cops are following you. We could slap and see the minutes. Look, I'm doing 30 mile an hour on the 70 mile hour road. They're doing 30. Then I went up at 80. They went 80. Then I went down to 40. They did 40. So I just knew. Then I went on the road about four times. They, they did the same. The daft cunts. And then when I got to near Bradford, I pulled, pulled into Bradford with me. Two, two had packs that I had to work down there. I bought a bike down from there. I used to work with really fucking powerful people. So I called in this street and I knew no, no white people live in this street. And that's not me being racist. It's just all black lads live there. Indian Pakistani lads. So there was a copper sat there. It's about late night. Like that, trying to read. You couldn't even see the paper. They were pretending to be like under cut, like just a man waiting for someone. I thought, you stupid, could you just grasp yourself? He just sat there like that with his hands like that. Or got out the car and maybe messed it off with his car. You would probably not trust it. Because he was sitting like that. I thought, you can't even see to read it. There's no, it's not the light street lights to read it. We thought, so we knew them. But we knew anyway, the followers could, could see them. So it goes in there. Okay, I come in Leeds. It's a bit like Teesside Park in Middlesbrough, where it's all shops and duty sports and stuff like that, and cinemas and stuff. So we've got there, and then we, we, this, this man said, come in, come in. He, he sat down, and he said, are oh, you okay? He said, yeah. He, said, I was in, he was in the SES with him, you see. So he had a sh shop called the I Spy Shop, it was called. So he goes in, and he got this device. He took the screws off it. He went, if the batteries are like, say, five or six, it's... It's not something that's not anyone powerful, it's like eight or nine. It's something really high up. He said, like, what? He said, MI5, MI6, or SES. I'm like, fucking hell, you know what I mean? I fucking shit myself here. Thinking, what the fuck am I good? Anyway, they've got it. He's put it on, it went to nine. He went, that's the most powerful I've ever seen. It's MI5, he said, at least. I went, seriously, when you haven't said it's MI5 or it could be MI6, he said. I said, well, I've been angry. I've got a lot of these black lads from Leeds who are top, top dealers and that. He said, well, it could be just guilt by association with them, but they're on here. This is MI5 or MI6. He said, it's, it's not even SES, it's, it's them. That's what they do. Everything's bugs with them. They, they follow you with tracking devices everywhere. He said, I've never seen this before. When he put it on the machine, he said, it's VHS. Never had VHS frequency. VHS is television frequency. He said, it's usually radio frequency. So it's really, really expensive. This here won't be out on the market. For the public for probably 12 years but we the elite stuff as well comes like eight and nine the batteries are the, the called lithium batteries he said the strange thing is i've never seen this what they've done he said that bug's coming on emanating which means beep beep two seconds then going off for 10. i said what's that for he went we'll see you've got a bug and you try to sweep it and you're looking for it if it goes off for 10 seconds you might miss it or the other thing as well it does it saves the battery at last that could last a year that battery so it could follow you for a year for the, the powerful so that battery i went fucking hell so i'm like anyway so we put it back together so we put it back together and as we come out we go to the uh this place it was a restaurant like tg tgi's or something it's called i think it wasn't there we were having a steak and that and sitting me next time i come out it was in the start so I've got on the, on the side of my hands like this, and I've got the phone, I've got two phones, I've got one on the top. I'm phone and watching what else to say, listen, I've been there, uh, I've been there, uh, I've got a bug in my car, I've got it on me now. I've got this area, the police have followed me. It's illegal, I know it is. He said, right, so what I've done is I read the code number and name out of the bug on the, on the, it's like a little mobile phone. And when I was in that shop with him, he got me, he screenshot it and he sent it to somebody. So it was sent to three different people for me, the solicitors, my sisters and someone else had sent it. So my sister said that night, my mum, my dad, my brother, my other brother, my sister, um, in the house I was living in, all got raided all at the same time. So when I got nicked up then, they raided all the houses. 
got fucking nothing because I was never going to put it in my own relation now because there's people where I went with the gear, my fucking idiots they are. So then the way they came, they came and they came up, he came and run over and he had a, never seen them before, he was, he'd done that and it was a telescopic scosh, kosh. I went over then, I'll fucking spark you, you maybe that will knock you clean out. The other cop was like from Leeds, they're all tiny, little fucking five, seven, I'm like fucking six, three, six, three and a half. 20, 24 stone, and I'm done. I'm got a vest on. I'm going, oh, fucking come on. I knew there's all kids behind me. I went, put them fucking weapons down now. There's kids behind us. What if the bullet misses me and she shoots them off? Put the fucking weapons down, you scumbags. And then the cop was like, they shit themselves with some leads. And the other one's like, looking at each other. I went, oh, then you've got, you, want to, you want to play games? Let's play games. Anyway, he goes, I said, put that fucking thing down now. So anyway, he put it down. I said, he said, put, 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 put the handcuffs on me. Put my handcuffs on like that. So the other one said, can you get your hands, can I put my hands behind my back? He said, well, can I just put two handcuffs? I said, I'm not that fucking strong. He said, but well, you look looking to me, he said. So he put two sets of handcuffs on me. I went, I couldn't even break one of my fucking two. He went, you're a big lad though, aren't you? I went, oh, yeah. And so he said, well, it's nothing to do with us. We were on another job. We'd been pulled off this to, to arrest you. So I went, got, got in your way. I should have said, it's fuck all in my car, but I want to watch them search my car. So they came over because I said, you know, these two, these cunts here, he's under investigation for pinching. One of them was under investigation, it's made here. This one here is a fucking scumbag. He's been, he's been caught with drugs in the police station. He's a police officer. And also the other ones are fucking being done for pinching combi boilers and selling them. I said, it's all in the newspaper. I said, they've got a worse record than me. I'm got a record. But anyway, they took me into the police station. There was a lady, she was an inspector. She went, well, we found nothing in your car, uh, Mr. Cockrell. We found a hundred pounds between the three of you. They've got no weapons in the car. As far as I'm concerned, I'm letting you go. She let us go within 20 minutes of holding us. So the cops coming in, oh, I don't, don't make a complaint about me, I lose my job. I said, you should have thought about that before you fucking started all this fucking shit. I said, he said, oh, I've got a breakfast. No, I've got an egg on my chin. He said, I said, no, you've got a breakfast on your face. He said, oh, that's funny. He said, oh, don't. He said, oh, I'll get the sack for this. So I never, I never, I never got in the sack. I'm not that type of person. I could have. We, we would have got the sack. And Kevin come out with a t-shirt on. And you opened his top there and it was so very went, Kevin doesn't Superman doesn't lie to the cop because it was funny as well. Then Flight was there, I said, see your backup. I went, yeah, he said, he's on more medication than the fucking um, Safeway has got. <laughs> By the time he takes his med, it'll be fucking from eight o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock at night, they were all laughing the coppers. So I went, oh cheers, bye, see you later. And then the other ones went, I could either say you got me to take 17 arm officers off we were doing a we were supposed to go in for a, a, a unit of us today to go and get an app that infiltrated our 17 armed robbers was involved in it no sorry 17 police officers to go and you know they have stakeouts things went there the stakeout they took all them off who said they'd have loads of money they'd have drugs and they'd have firearms they haven't got anything they've got a hundred pound between the three of them let it go they were fucking gutted gutted then the next one was Operation Grill, they called it on me. So I was on, I, went, I used to be under a mall. They had six, I had two flats, and he had four houses. I didn't own them all. I just rented them. We owned one for one house. So I'd never stay in the same house. I'd keep moving around. I had half a dozen cars. I keep changing cars. So when Paddy Watson was ex army, he said, You're under a road still, aren't you? Went, yeah. He said, I've been passed twice. I was going to come and see you. There's a bloke still outside with a haversack on his back. He's been there over an hour. He's a drug squad, definitely drug squad. He said, I've tuned in the frequency. I'm on it now. I can hear them talking about the call Operation Gorilla. He was shit up. And you could just tune in the frequency if you knew what you were doing. I didn't know how to do it. He said, oh, no. He said, uh, we're still here now, blah, 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 blah. So I thought, fuck this. If I start going up to people's houses, I'm going to bring them on top. So I stayed in for the full 10 days. Then I went out, I went out of the house. And on the 12th days, I thought, right, I went for old Bobby. And I went and we went to Scarborough, all the way to Scarborough, just driving normal, all the way to Scarborough, went for an ice cream, went to this place, it was a, like a, a Viking centre thing, like, like like a Viking, but it was like, it wasn't like the Viking centre in York, it was like, you could go through different stages, like, I can't remember what it was called now, but it was like a, like a centre, anyway, it was, it was good. So we went there, and the next day I went with our skinny, my brother Peter, we went to uh, Bridlington for the day, went to Bridlington, and he said, so the, I knew they could only have so many weeks on you, like say two or three weeks, because it cost that much money. So after about, I think it was two weeks, they just pulled it off and left it. So then I got, then I, then I was told there was a girl that I knew, 
who used to get gear off us and I, I, I lost it. I said, oh, there's a, there's a fucking a cop sitting in my house in Durham Road because she lived around the corner for me. It's on the bends, Durham Road. She said, what they're doing? I work in hygiene, but you make kitchens. I do so many for three, three days, I think it was on four days a week, and I'm off three days. There four days, she did 12 hours for four days, and then she's off for three. I used to get four pounds a week, and this is 30 years ago, a lot of fucking money. But, but I couldn't sit there doing fucking kitchens, me every fucking drive. Shoot myself with one end with nine millimeter. So anyway, she said uh, the cops got newspaper. You mean cops? She went, well, there's a stake out there watching a lad who's got who's ringing Land, land Rovers. They said it was my mate Richie Sharp. So I went and seen Richie. I drove down because I used to have my policy, but I think I brought it on top of them. Me, Bam Bam, BG, all of us, all but Bandy, Steve Brooks, we all used that place as we all like if we owned it and we were on it as a, a trading policy. So you could have something like six, I think, people on the trading policy. Cost us hundred pound a year, but if we're up to a fifty thousand pound car, so we're all insured. So we used to use that, but we'd pop in and see him. He was all right, but we used to give him a few E and things out. Like he was all right. But anyway, the silly bastard said, "Don't let them know that. The, the, don't let them know. You know they're watching you. Just just do anything normal because they could come back another time and get you. In, you know, catch you." So they came out and they pulled the trousers and sat, putting the smack on their asses. And when oh, you're there, you'd have to the cop with the trousers and all. So the last right was she was glad because they got pulled off the same day. I said, You stupid bastard. Anyway, later on they got caught. They did exactly what I said. They did it. They went somewhere else doing it. Towards Darlington way in the countryside, which is the nightmare to go to the countryside and do stuff. It's pathetic. The better where there's loads of people all over the place. So went in the countryside with a little garage, started bringing the cars there and got caught. Got five, five years ago. Used to be a lot of it going then. It was called uh, ringing the cars. Used to take the um, my mate was the best in, in the fucking world there from Billingham. One, Phil, one, everyone knows him from Billingham. He could bring the Cosworth, so the Cosworth was stored the 13, the 13 stamps in the Cosworth all over different numbers. He grinded them all down, painted them all down, and re, reprinted all the fucking the stamps on it all over them. But the digits, like say 573 and P45, and all that shit, he put them all back on. So when they came to investigate, and that's their old car. <laughs> they didn't even fucking know it was their car. That's all good. He was a fucking, he'd done things to the car where it made it look different a bit. Maybe he made a knock on it or something. Whatever, he'd be changed a couple of things in it. So, well, that's an old car. I think he changed the, the, the digital thing, something like that. It's just my old car. So he got off with it. Really clever he was. He, he, when I crossed my car, a woman was driving down down and back lane. And there was a woman broke down. And there was a fucking, in fact, there was a, a bloke with a Land Rover pulled her off the road. So he came across my road and I was coming towards me. And then the woman came around the bend, another woman in a little car. And I went, somebody said to me, if don't go in the back, into the back, or don't go into a fence, or go into the bushes, because you won't get paid out because you've crashed. So I let her come at me, but I was lucky because that that law was out where you had to put your seat on, come click every little trip, that thing where everyone used to do it. So I had, I had the hands free, I had a motor roller, phone in. I push the button. Yeah, you're right. I've just been to see something there um, for, for some either one in uh, Darlington from travellers. I'm like that talking. I'm, I'm leaving it on me armrest like this in the middle. That was massive. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I'm just down, down back there. I'm just coming home now, such and such. And then this woman came anyway. Fucking, she hit the, the, the car in the Land Rover and the wheel snapped, her wheel snapped, and the wheel came straight at me. And I ducked down like that, and the fucking wheel went through the window. Bust all the, the window, the side window, and all the front glass smashed. If I'd have had me sitting up straight, it would have hit me. So I was like this with my, 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 my arm on the, the rest. It was massive. I used to be like, you know, getting comfortable and lean over. And I was lucky because, anyway, they got the car fixed. Uh, cost me 15 million quid, I think it was. But it was like top of the range Cosworth. But they had to put, what they had to do is, they had to put a, with it being in a van, they had to put a Q reg on it. They made it a Q reg. So I sold it, I think I sold it for five grand, and I got her. What I did is I put a private reg on it, I put an, and then I put, a, I put an Irish reg on it. Got somebody to go to Ireland and bring it back, and then put a private reg on it, so it didn't come in the register, but it had been in the bank. And that's how you used to do it in the old days. Re-register from Ireland. And there's another one, so I was in a, I was in a BMW. It was a 635, it was an old one, it was like a big shark silver. So I'm parked on, on Middlesbrough, where the 
re recruiting centre is for the army. It's got Irish plates on. So I've gone in the place next door for the telly. I've got a I've got a big telly, what was it called? I can't remember the name of it. it was about four, I think 44 inches was the biggest one then. Big heavy fucking things away. So I'm buying what flies with me. He went, um, I'm a sergeant next door. Can you move that please? I'm gonna have to phone the bomb squad because it's got Irish number plates on. Every man can, I'm not fucking Irish. I said, you want to tell? I said, I'll sit in if you want. I'm going to blow myself up, am I? You know, you have to go by protocol. I've got to, if any, if any Irish plates come up, we, we can't, obviously, we're in the army. I said, yeah, you understand, mate. We moved around the corner all the way. Yeah, fucking bombs were going to come for me. Fucking hell. I laid it all down. Z League, GG23, Freedom, Bitcoin having hits. Bitcoin having hits. I know, I know a lot of people made a lot of money on that other stuff. That other coin years ago, fucking made mil millions. You made Paul, I call him, great lad, really nice man. He tried, tried to get me in, and I said, No, he made about fucking four or five million pounds off it. But it's one of them things you have to do straight away because once you're on with it, it's like the coke when we used to mix it. We was only maybe half a dozen million, about four or five of the lads knew how to mix coke and mix it without it fucking it up and type of thing. And then when we showed a couple of people, they told that they fucking one we showed one lad. And we showed another, and they showed every cunt in Middlesbrough how to do it. I said, You fucking moron. I did that to help you. Now, every cunt knows how to do it. We're making no money. We were getting one one ounce and making three or one, repressing it, making it like, like rock hard. And it was like, oh, Yeah, I, went, I, went, I, went, I, went, I don't, people don't want the pound, they want the, 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 the rock. So, repressing it and doing it, and I'll end up doing it. Um, put my mate Chan off and Red Cap shows how to do it. Old school gangster, uh, Italian bloke. And he knew, knew how to do it. So I showed one lad who was a really good friend of mine and I fucking him off in the end. And uh, he started showing every cunt. I'll show, I'll show him, make a fortune, man. I thought, you fucking backward cunt. No rage in him. I thought, you fucking idiot. Idiot. It's a proper idiot. You don't tell people in your business. And there's another one. You know, these fucking idiots did a few tax on one lad. He went, me and Brian just took 20,000 a off someone. I went, no. We're going to get 20 year for something. I mean, we've done well. We took us 2,000 off someone. And he's gone around. We just took, we just took 20,000 in ecstasy. You talk like hundreds of thousands of pounds. It's like fucking 20 pounds a piece. It's just fucking bad. I mean, I, no, I, I, used to, I, I used to tell no one now, man. I would tell now. Like when I was giving people gear, I said, I don't get it all Wednesday. I'd have it, I'd have it Monday. And they'd pop up Monday and give it Monday. It, I didn't trust no one. No one. Not a fucking soul. There's that many people you see, you think they're great, and and these are the what they do is they'll bug your house, the cops. They'll be say Tom, Dick, and Harry and me say, and then you go and the next minute you get raided. But they're listening to everything you're saying, but they can't use the bug because they haven't got permission of the home office. But they use it to say like Tom will say like, well, I've got the black, I've got the sab, well, I'll go in that and you go in the van. So then they'll raid you. And you'll think, well, there was only, I'll be saying on my own, I think there was only them three. It's one of them three who's from grass me up. But it was the cops doing it. And then they'll come back to your house and raid your house, say, I've, been, I've, got, I've been done a few times with this. Well, somebody just said you're in a firearm in the back garden. So they'll come deliberately, go in your living room, strip search you. And while they're in there, they'll take the bug out the wall and they get somewhere. That's what the sneaky, dirty bastards on us they are. And then you're off an argument saying, well, say there's only you and Tom in the room. Tom, there's only me and you in the fucking room. It's fucking you. And then Tom's thinking, it's me. Because he's been reading, I've been reading at the same time, and that's how the cops do it, so they have you all shoot each other. And they sit back on, hey, 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 they think they're clever cunts. So that's one of, the, one of the main tricks they do, they'll bug, bug your house. Well, they wait till there's a few years in, then listen to them, to, to listen to it, and then say there's only like three years, and say you've got a brother, so you think my brother wouldn't say, oh, Bobby. So then there's only Tom left, you think it's fucking Tom. That could set us up, and then you'll probably go and do him in. Because you know it's him, because there's no one else, but you didn't realise them cunts have bugged your house but then they'll come back for the bug say no we've had another fact they should one well, maybe three months later take the bug out of the house it's, it's no good to them then and that's all they catch you it's not with the intelligence of them up here it's the devices they use now and but now they've got devices they don't have to bug your house they can sit 10 miles away with, 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 that, with a, a, a weapon and they can put points out of your house and it can pick up the signal from there can, it hits the window and the window becomes a listening device it can pick everything up can't can get room now. They've got ones where they can in a crowd where they can put the point the gun at you and lip read you in a football crowd because 100,000 people screaming. But you're going, you 
lips, when everyone's lips have to move the I love you, some you say, everyone's lips move that same way because it's the way you say the words. So that's one of the best ways now how I catch criminals who go to football matches or where you, they think they're safe in a crowd in a, in a, in a cinema. I go to the cinema for the day. Uh, they can just watch you, not in the cinema, but like, you know, when you go in there for the day and you're in, in, in the, when you go and sit at the, the Pizza Hut or something, you're in there and you're talking. They've got cameras in there watching everything. They've got all sorts now. It's not that they've got any better at being clever like fucking Sherlock Holmes. They're just fucking singing you could now with all the devices they've got. And all they do now is they don't actually follow you no more. They put you on a grid. So you have Tom, Anthony, we went to Sweden's mum used to work as a cleaner. She worked for the police, believe it or not. There was no DBS checks then. And she was in there and there was a picture of me at the top, bam bam second, speedy third, and about the 15, 20 people who were working with me. That was like, you know, like they're doing the FBI, you see them. And she she was she got a picture of it, but she told us, she told us exactly what it was. You were at the top of the like they do in the um, the telly when they're after someone. And then that actually they knew they were really after us then. And they were giving this operation gorilla and all that shit. They were just wanting me bad, really bad. Because I wouldn't work with the cunts and say, well, why don't you use your brains and come and work with us? We'll let you do everything. Just give us that little bit. And I went, fuck off. Just come out after that. Just come out after an armed robbery. I got a gun for. Come out, I'll tell you that in those hands. And I just got done for an armed robbery. And I got off with it. They never picked me up in the lineup. But they had me bang the rights, they said. And anyway, I went in. I went in, like, come out and said, I've got him. But it, it allegedly was me. But uh, he never picked me out of the lineup. But uh, no one got, no one, no, no one went to jail for that either. Got done for an armed robbery at, at the Little Hotel. Uh, took allegedly a key of cocaine off a lad from Nigeria, bringing it in from Africa and selling it. And when I went in front of the judge, the judge went, well, how can we? No one's picked me out, obviously. I was, I was released. But the other lad got Romando, who was with me, he got picked out. It was allegedly with me. <laughs> Just, he got picked out. And when he went to court, the judge said, how can I convince the jury to convince him to put him away, who's taking the cocaine off them? And he's bringing it in from Africa. And who's the worst? He said, that he's tinted now, the black lad would bring it through. He's tinted because he's brought it to it and he's admitted he sells it in Teesside. So how's the, how's the jury going to believe him? Can't go up court with it. And he was, Denny was called, the barrister, Denny, that was his name, Denny. And he, he was he was the police barrister against me, that could he was brilliant. But my mate Tom Moore got him. I said, get Denny. But he's another one you want to know. For instance, see you up against... See you in, see you in t just see you in Liverpool. See you up against another gang, and they see like 20 good barristers. Phone every one of the barristers, phone them all, and then they can't say, Oh, my name's Tommy Smith. I wonder if you could help me. I've got a, a such and such case, and they'll say, Yeah, we well, could help you with that. Phone another one. So they then have to go and get another barrister throughout the area because they would have to say, Oh, well, we spoke to Mr. Cockrell, or oh, we spoke to Mr. Johnson that um, two years ago. So that's a conflict of interest because you've spoken to him, you know him, they can't represent them. So you go and so I've, I've done it a lot of times, four or five top barristers on Teesside and phoned them up. And they've said, Is it another one? <laughs> I said, And if I said, Give me a drink, you know, I have to give me a drink, a few of them. And they've said, Well, Mr. Cockrell phoned us. So we can't work with sites. So it's, it's like um, him off the Sopranos when he was going for a divorce, he phoned all the top lawyers up in the area. I said, It was 40 lawyers, he phoned the fucking lot. Because he's on the phone, he's got to record it. If when the court is when I spoke to this man and he gets kicked out, a conflict of interest is called. It's like him, Lee's. That's why I said the policeman there. I said, he's been lazy, liaison, liaison with police officers. No, he's just made this up. Just, but I said, believe if he has, he's still got a right. I said, but he's done a book with him. He went, you are. I said, he's done books with them. He went, you could hear, know me out. I could see his face going, fucking hell. I said, he's actually done a book with him and he's on a television show with him talking about the book. And talking about what he's done in the area with these police officers. And he's also said he's got Delroy showers as if it's a threat towards me, a gangster from uh, Liverpool. So all that shit there, you know, I love to say all that shit. You know, I love to say that when you have a court case going on against someone because you're then tinting them. So if somebody's in the jury has seen that or heard that, like what he's saying, or well, he's supposed to be telling the truth because he's been working with police officers. So when somebody in the jury go, Man, I've seen that thing about Brian Cockrell. That man's work, that man is telling the truth. That horrible man, not, not me, they've paid me horrible in it. 
so the people in the jury would find you guilty. But it's against the law to do it. You're not allowed to divulge the information on the person when you take them to court, what you take the court for, because you fuck the case up, because you, you're giving the public information what's not, not available, because the court case has to be in, indoors between 12 of your peers, your prosecution, your barrister, and a judge. That's it. Not the fucking old world, but he's done. And the police, the police said, didn't he? He's getting arrested. I'm never going to come on again. This was three weeks coming up on Tuesday. So let's see if you see uh, I get arrested. So it's what is it now? It's Saturday. So I've got three days and I'm getting arrested. That, that's his prediction. And he said, and I promise you, so my son's life, I'll never come on YouTube again if he doesn't. But I know him enough because I've already spoke to the police because they phoned me. He phoned me the first and I looked at him. I thought it was one of them numbers. Well, would you like this? So you don't have such and such fucking shite to come on talking crap and children to know it. So I just awkward so then he phoned again i just had a feeling i thought this cops this i just had a feeling because that copper was about that new one from london's came up with complaints cops for emma i thought i better answer this it could be for emma it could be the police for her so anyway I answered and it was the cops and he went oh such and such into a cid and then i shouted a little bit at him. and afterwards I, really, I said listen i was a little bit abrupt with you i do apologize profusely i said i've just had there uh, my wife's had a nightmare with the threats to rape and he said, what's that to rape? I said, tell him a few things. I went, oh, that's a different game changer. You send me that. Emma sent a fucking, not a lot, she sent it. I think she sent about four videos from London, one where he's screaming and shouting. And one where he's admitted to taking drugs and everything. So that's going to be, that's going to destroy that because we can then say to the jury, look, he's admitted to done the stuff. We now want a, a, a sample, finger, a fingernail or a hair flonical he, he can't see off of the same person who won't say his name, Tommy Smith. Tommy Smith can't see off the, off the stuff because he's obviously addicted to it since he was 15. And that's it, game one. In case we won't even go to court, he said, if you've got that, it won't even go to court. The, the, the police, I even put, they won't even give it to the, won't even give it to the prosecution. He said, if, it's, if you've got that type of stuff, I won't even, won't, won't even go to court, won't even give it to the, the prosecution, CPS. So I said, so they're not well. He said, well, that's what I told you. Well, he's told everyone. I said, well, he said that as well. I said, yeah, he's told everyone. The CPS have phoned me. And they've told me, Paul Crow's going to get the worst jail sentence in history. And he's also said that the police have liaison with him. They've got a special room. And he started laughing. I'm not going to tell you for you laughing. I said, but my wife's due line with distress. And then I told him all the other stuff. And he went, right, if you can get that to me, I'll promise you I'll look at that over the weekend. I said, well, I'll give him my word, I won't mention his name. Said, I've never mentioned his name on you. I told her, he said, you can say anything you want, but don't mention his name. He said, because it's detrimental to the case for you. So I, I thought that myself, but he said, you know, child, you should sound. I said, I know, but it's not childhood when your windows go through, officer, and your wife's nearly been hit with a building, but a 16 pound building, but nearly killed her. And you fired, your little dogs could have had his face blew off and be a bit of smoke bomb up. And my brother's got autism, could have been set alight, and the house been killed. I said, so we're not talking of just malicious communication with him. We're talking about threats to kill. And he's carried out these threats. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, I've already got information from a lad called Simon who's willing to give full evidence with a full statement of what he said in, in, in this uh, conversation. But he's threatened to bear me out. So I'll give my name and address out. He what? Give you what, on live? Or, yeah, on live. Give it out. I've got it all, the whole lot. He sent it to his computer from his phone and his computer, and you can see the same person's face on it. And you can see the names and addresses of Lip Sorry, Matt, Matt. He's given my name and address out. I told him to beat me up, be deadly serious, offer him out. He said, But then, don't worry, he said, I've just had two lads to threaten his, burn, burn his house now. He said, See, you said, yeah, I've got the whole lot. So why didn't you put it, give us the age of us? Because I've told you, every time we phone up with the sale, it's still ongoing investigation. What we're not. We're not, we're not, we're, it's a still ongoing investigation. We're not finished with it yet. But I was talking the other day, he said it could go, could go to the CPS next two or three weeks. But now this is a game changer. So if this is right, it's not going to go, it's not going to go to court. I know it's not because I've never sent one message from my phone to him. And I said, I'm not going to just ask you a question. Is there anything in the indictment or anything in the, the, the sorry, there's anything there? for well, when I was supposed to threaten the child with nothing of the such. I said, well, he's telling people, well, he's actually telling people that you've yeah, physically abused, physically abused his son 
and threatened his wife with a knife and he, he, he threatened his son and wife with a knife. I said, he's telling that to everyone. He's actually abused my son. He's getting done for the abuse, abusing a child and a child and a woman. woman. That's what he said. I said. Well, that's not, that's not in the, there's nothing in here with that one. Nothing whatsoever. So I knew the lying bastard. Just trying to frighten people, which is wrong. We've done nothing wrong to him. Oh, we asked for his advice. I said, he said, we'll leave it with us then and I'll look into it. Yeah, I had a bottle a few weeks ago before that. I, was... I think Rock's, where's Rock? I've been pretty... Rock's been had a few uh, few drinks. No wrong with that Rock. You haven't fucking done that wrong. Fucking, it's, um, you just enjoy yourself. As long as you're not on it every fucking night, I'll be coming to look for you if you are. Just enjoy yourself. Don't don't feel guilty or all that. Fucking hell, not wrong with that, mate. Fucking hell. The man, if you fell off the wagon, fucking hell, we all do that. I've done loads of times. Five years I've been uh, uh, sober though. I've, I've had an odd drink. I can drink as more than me. I can have like one or two. I'm all right. I don't like any more than that because it just feels sickly. It makes me feel bulky. Why did you have a run with this? this? No. No. You, may, you must have asked me that. That's obvious. We know who that is. I know exactly who that is. We know that. Is. That's you, that's you Divi. I know that's you straight away. He's asked that question about 400 times. Fucking crackers. See, I know it's him. So you go to jail now, crank. You went to jail. See the way around it's going now. So I told him, I said to him, they've then fucking, they've investigated it properly and then we'll see the truth now. We'll see what all the stuff Mary Howe's put in everything. Carol Edwards, a lot of them, Steve, Steve, all the old stuff, the whole lot's going in. So there's about, it's up to now, but eight people going to court. All been tortured and all got the proof on the phones and on the computers and everything. The whole lot's there now. You can't hide no more now. You can't use the police anymore now as a vehicle. Because that's what you've been doing for 10, 20 years. You've been bullying people, torturing people. And now you're just there to come and that's what happens. What goes around comes around in life and that's what's happened to you now. You've done this for years. I'm not in the same area, I don't live in from day six, I've been about six. Please can now prosecute without a complaint. Mistake, in my opinion, yeah, well, they've tried to do it. We've been 14 months, I've been on fucking there uh, under investigation for this little crank, and there's no evidence whatsoever. He's pretended I've threatened to kill his wife with a knife outside the house, and they've got a video from it. It's all lies, compulsive lies. So, when they've checked everything, there's nothing there. Uh, they've had with seven devices for 14 and just over 14 months coming up, and they've not found one single text off me, not one single threat, not one single phone call, not one single email, they've not used an email. I've done the old school, I've used computers and so the last few years we and my wife still has to set up every night as you see after city and she has to do all the work. I don't know how to use computers, so I literally come to them. And I was in a wheelchair for fucking a year. He said I smashed all these windows to the cop. I said, Well how could I do that officer? And I was in the house with my sister and my wife and my brother. And he said his wife said see me run down the seat with a big big pole, smash all the windows. And point the accelerator. I can't even run down the street now. I can't even hand you up and go up the drinks and things like that. You can see them on the table and struggle with my hands. So how could I have done that 14 months ago? When I'm struggling still now. Absolutely. I can prove it with the uh, surgeons, all the injuries I've got. Uh, they can prove the nerve damage I've got and the injuries I've got and the medication I'm on. It's impossible for me to do it. Sprinting down the street. And she, she retracted it and went, Oh, it wasn't him, but we know he got the windows cut through. No, it wasn't me at all. It wasn't me at all. How could I go out and get, how could I get 16 miles from here to, to their house and do all these things and then get back home? And the police haven't even been there uh, questioning me over it. Because you know why? Because they know I was in hospital. They've checked up. They're not fucking stupid. You might think they're daft, but they're not stupid. All they have to do is phone the hospital up and they have to, they have to divulge the information. They've already been there and checked all my um, injuries. I had seven vertebrae done in the top of my neck, two titanium rods put in, and two vertebrae done in the bottom of my neck. So the bottom of my back, L4 and L5, I left me paralysed from the neck down. 
and I've got the hospital bed in there to prove it. I've got the wheelchair and everything that was in you saying, stop pretending you're in a wheelchair so you can show up because my friends want to fight you and all that shit you're putting up. That went on for ages. Like the Decker and all them want to fight me when I was in a wheelchair. That was really big of him, tough. Yeah. And I think Badly Girl needs help. Uh, I see, I told you. I told you it was about that term. Take that idea off. I think Baldy needs help. That's you. That's that that little cunt. Take him off uh, freedom, that daft cunt there. That's him. That's that crank there. That's his starting already. This one here, mate. Z League 23. And I think Baldy needs help. We all know who says that word, don't we? We all know that. We all know, don't we, Mr. Tinney? Mr. Tinney, it's you again, isn't it? You just can't stop, can you? You go to jail, you silly little cunt. You go to jail, you little moron. There you are. The police are watching. He's on again. Look, you can't help yourself. Oh, that freedom's gone. Oh, yeah. Baldy needs help. Oh, yeah. You've just scratched. You see them two there, is him? That one and that one, is him? That Dibby cunt. That one there, 23 there. Freedom. Yeah, he's just put on uh, Baldy, that's what he calls, he calls the bee balls, I've looked, but my hair's going up, obviously my hair's going up, but I don't give a fuck about my hair, Jimmy, I honestly don't give a fuck, I don't give a fuck, I'm nearly 60 year old, what's your excuse for that ginger fucking mop mop, he's on again, he's on, he's, Emma, 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 Baldy needs help, he's just put, look, what Emma was in chat, mm. now he's put fort, he's just put on there, Baldy needs help, it's him, isn't it? Yeah. He said, Emma, Baldy needs help. Yeah, get rid of him, feed him for good. Yeah, get rid of uh, him. Uh, fucking yeah, idiot. There, look, the girl, Baldy needs help. That's that, 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 that's that one, him. I won't say his name. That's that idiot. We all know what I'm going about. Crank. Oh, get rid of that crank first. Please arrest him. I really, really arrest him. Not making lies up this time, are we? Then? No. Wait till you get hit. Wait till you get hit. Wait till your father gets I've home. got him. Yeah, he's a crank. I knew right. he, I knew do he you was want, on. Do you want the chicken and the chips? Would you you look gorgeous you, tonight, as would usual. How would, you like, how would you like lamb steaks? Thank you for doing all the information. Send it all yeah. off to the... Uh, Authorities. Would you like some lamb steaks or would you like some chicken and chips or would you like uh, one of those um, like fun things that you have, uh, what they call chicken thingies? Chica. It's a thingies, is it? No, no, I want to take it. No, it's a anyway. Anything you want to do, darling. <laughs> chicken and chips or, or, no, lamb, got chips or lamb steaks or do I chicken and little potatoes? Little potatoes, only about four little potatoes. Baldy, there, there's me hair, Jamie. I don't give a toss. I really don't give a toss. I'm honest. I can sit with my fucking hat off. I'm not bothered with that. I'm not bothered with that. It doesn't bother me, you crank. I really don't give a shit. These die me, yeah, I know that. Yeah, there you crank. I'm so... Like, listen. Come on. Yeah, he's just a dibby, mate. Playing Steve. So you want, do you want um, Fingy? Fingy? Who's Fingy? Do you want me to cook a full chicken? Like a full chicken. Do you cook your yeah. full chicken? No. Thank you. No. Well, what do you want then? No, no, that'll go. Well, what would you like then? Uh, anything you want, babe. I can't, I can't I think what chicken I don't and, want to... Chicken and red little potatoes will go with a bit of gravy, maybe. Because a chicken, full chicken and chicken for an hour and a half. Oh, yeah, so. I'll have that an hour and a half. Go on then. I've had, about, I've had five meals already, six with the protein. And I've had a protein on here, so yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't know the Essex boys... Um, like playing Steve, um, I actually did. I knew I know Ben no money because I did the book with um, about the 50 biggest gangsters in, in history, right in Great Britain, and also I did the documentary with their Ben as well. Where I'm in that one where he, yeah, I actually came for him. He said, Imagine you, I, I, I came for him, I picked him up in a Range Rover, <laughs> anyway. Y'all taking the fucking piss, you he said. <laughs> Last time we've seen one of these, is, he, he, he started laughing. So I showed him where they used to tax houses and how they used to tax. It was in Spreading World, I think. Because he, no, he, he, he had a coffee up there. That and some and that. Just a bit of that. Yeah. I'll do some steak cut chip. No, I don't know. No. No, I don't know chips. I don't like chips. I only like chips. I've had a burger or something with red sauce. 
Yeah, so yeah, uh, so I, I met Bernard. He actually stood. He is a picture of me. And him stood on the, against this wall without this poster was on there. So we did that, and we did a book that was called 50, uh, Faces of the Underworld and Gangsters." And I was in both documentaries and then both in, in the book as well. So yeah, but this this crank is on the fucking bend. One of the great rape people's dogs. Rape people's dogs. I've never heard of anybody in my life. I'm nearly 60 years old. I've never heard of anyone, any villain or anyone, threatening women like that to, to rape people. That uh, come in people's houses and rape them. Fucking disgusting. Yeah, mate. You have to keep in contact with her. Yeah, I'm the same. Fucking, they've had me. They've had me arrested. Fucking multiple, multiple times for murders, kidnapping, shootings. I think when you've got that big name and you're living in whatever area, same as the Essex boys, it's a bit like going back to like Jesse James and them. They used to have the whole the wall gang. Every fucking body in the facility of 400 miles was Jesse James and the whole the wall gang. And same as Bonnie and Clyde. When they were doing robberies, people would say, like, people, this is fact, people would have like, say, a bank, would have, say, £3,000 in it. They pretend they had like, say, the three thousand pounds stolen, they might have gone in a grand stone because they might have had some money hit somewhere else, or they turn on say we had ten thousand pounds in, but they only had three grand in, and they keep their seven grand. So it would sneak his foot, and they, they were the worst ones for it. Them um, garages, you know, like motorways, you would pull over and fill a tank up. They'd say, well, I had eight hundred pounds in the cat, the cashier till or whatever, and they had maybe thirty quid in. But they used, they used to use people like that, but they got caught. Bonnie and Clyde, how they, they, what they used to do, they used to have. 50, 50, 51 states, I think it was in America. So if you were in, like, say, St. Middlesbrough, St. Right where out of the side, Stockton, then you went, say, to Durham, that's a different state. Now, if you went over the state line in a car, the FBI could put warrants out for your arrest because you broke a federal offence. So what they used to do, they pinch a car in Stockton, they drive right to the very end of Stockton, about maybe half a mile away, and leave the car there, walk half a mile, pinch a car from that state, and still not get done. But how they got caught, they never, they never got caught by pinching a car and going over the state line. They actually went to a garage and they robbed the garage. And the lad who grasped them up, who made the statements and was going to set them up, and that's where they all got shot to fuck. You know, about 200 bullets went through them. So that lad, he pinched stamps. That's a federal offence to mess, mess with, the, with the, uh, the post in America. You're not allowed, even in England, you're not allowed to touch people's letters and so. When he pinched the stamps, it was a federal offence, and that's when the FBI come in, and that's how they got caught. The FBI, they, they, actually, they actually kidnapped a, a Texas Ranger and made him look fucking daft and put a gun in his head and took pictures. But she was the one who had the balls. He didn't, he didn't have the balls. It was there. She was fucking crazy, she was. And she, she was loyal as fuck, and she got set alight. Bled, uh, mate got set alight, and she got a leg all bent. Blanche. I can't remember, Bull, 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 I think they call him, or Buck, Buck, that was his name, that was his brother's name. They got killed, uh, Buck, I think they died, and Blanche, she was crazy, I think, she, her eye. she went blind, she, she was in a fire. But Bonnie, Bonnie Parker wouldn't fucking give in, she went with him, and she was in the pain she was in, it was like the other pain I've got, fucking the same type of pain, really horrific pain, but no type of medication when I'm on, and she went through it just to stay with um, Bonnie, Bonnie and Hyde to Clyde. Clyde Barrett was his name, but every single thing they did in the area, they got the blame for. Fucking terrible. But they set them up. What happened is, they had a, they had a bloke who broke down, and because they were all cat, what they used to do, they used to go in banks, rob the fucking banks, and then in the old days, they, they used the banks would have the uh, deeds to like prop property people's property, so they'd go in and get all the deeds and set the fucking lot alight. So the all the people in the area would have a big massive. Shindig, 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 like a dance of 100 to 200 people to turn up and all the people go, listen, you don't have to worry about your houses no more. We've burnt all the fucking deeds. So the bank would say, we haven't got the deeds, we can't prove it with the owners of the bank. We can't prove it with the owners of the property. So they were good in a way. They were really good people. They just hated the law like fucking I do. I'd rather go down fucking blasting than fucking go in 20 air. I would. I'd rather go down fucking full, full blasting. I wouldn't give a fuck. Yeah, freedom, you to get a good price. Yeah, you've got, you've got to eat. You've got to eat. You've got to eat decent food and you've got to, you've got to nourish your brain. You've got to nourish your brain by reading things and 
when you're reading stuff and when you're getting your head into knowledge and when you're training, you're producing a thing called gamma, beta and serotonin. So you're getting good serotonin producing your brain. When you're just sitting there and he said, she said, she said, he said, your brain's fucking, it's like a volcano and it explodes in the end. Your fucking head can go, you can go a thing called catatonic, you can go that much. You can't come back, you end up like that. It's coming, that's what he's going to end up like, the staff cunt. He's completely deranged. He'll be in there, nutted off. I'll guarantee he gets nutted off. And he'll be in there. And he'll be going, oh, I'm doing a psychiatrist book. I'm doing oh, this, I've just been done for med. I'm getting his book. Oh, I'm doing this one. He's round the fucking bed. He is. I've never known a fucking nut and a fr fruit loaf of him. It's like you in my life. Every book's a bestseller. Every document is the best document ever made. He said, when he's done the lead off, he went, this is the best document you have said. He said, the only thing better than this is a Hollywood blockbuster. It, it only took two hours to make the documentary. How the fuck can it be a Hollywood blockbuster? If you don't, he said, the only thing that can beat this is something on the red carpet, you know, like in, um, is it, where's that, where the red carpet, where you go in, in London, I can't remember it was now, was it? I can't remember the name of the place. So he said, oh, that, the, the, that's the only place you could beat this. And when you watched, watched it, it was fucking dreadful. I, I was in that documentary. It was that embarrassing. I said, get me out of that. I said to, the, uh, to um, Paul, Paul Suggett, a documentary maker. I said, take me out of that documentary. It's absolute fucking shite. You know, Brian, please. He said, without you, we've got no credibility. He said, because you're the only one in that documentary. You're the only real one with credibility. You were new, Lee Duffy, who knocked around with him and, and hang, hang, hanged about with him. He said, so it's going to ruin the documentary. I said, Paul, I'll do anything for you. So then when we did the other one, Tina, I tell you, I do know from down that way. Yeah, six boys. I know Tina Shaw really, really well. I mean, I know she's been to our house about four or five times. She stayed up over quite a few days, multiple times she's been here. So that idiot, the so-called orphan, oh, I'm doing Tina Shaw's book. She's got, she's lovely. I go to her house. She's a lovely lady. I stay at their weekends. I go out drinking with her. I stop at her house with her. We've got a great relationship. If you've seen her. So Tina contacted somebody I know, a big team, big team of lads down that way. We got with a friend of mine who's a barrister, and his dad used to be used to knock around with the craze. So he turned around and said, uh, "Would you be let, let Tina Shaw?" She said, "I only trust Brian and Cockle and them because they seem lovely people, and Brian looks like old school like my dad." So she said, "Anyway, she came on to her. I have never I won't say his name because I promised the cop I wouldn't. I have never ever heard of you in my life, and the book you written about my dad, that book there is toilet paper, absolute garbage. You're a joke." Where do, if you phone me all the time, phone me right now in the live, you couldn't do it because you never phoned it, did you? Crank pretending to know people, pretending people Robbie Williams is phoning him up off take that, pretending he's going out with some celeb celebrities, uh, models, and all of this. Fucking totally crack as he is. So she said, uh, Tina, she said, oh, thank you so much because she felt great. Thousands there uh, was um, involved with it. You're addicted to 42 gram protein drinks, yeah, they're good. You better, what you better do with them is say, if I'm the 42 grams, I would have like one every half or one every half hour, every, like one, one every half hour or one every hour or one every second hour, just because you only digest, you only digest about 25 grams of protein at one time. So you better have, you better have like having four, or five, six little ones than actually one big in because you don't digest at all. And eggs are really good for you. Eggs are brilliant. Eggs are the abundance. The only thing with eggs is that, 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 that sometimes they, they give you the, 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 the bind in your stomach give you cramps sometimes but milk i used to have 10 pints of milk a day i, I was really lucky i wasn't um because it's full of sugar milk full of sugar it is but then i was in 10 i was having ten thousand calories when i was going for the when i was going when i qualified for the britain songs man i was on 15 to twenty thousand calories a day fucking unbelievable amount of food i was eating and he was saying i was making it up well all the top pros all the top Big people are 24, 23, 22 stone, all up like Rich Piano, all and they all eat like fuck. He's, he's gone now, passed away. But see, the Jay Cup, I love Jay Cup. He's so honest. He says, You've got to eat big to get big. You've got to eat. If you're big, you've got to eat. If you had a tank, you put a five of pepper in, it's not going to fucking move. You put a five and a car mini, it's going to drive all over. So the bigger you are, the more food you need in you, the more protein, the more creatine, and the more rest you actually need as well. You need more rest when you're bigger. You need to rest in the afternoon, got a 40 minute rest, 20 minute rest. 40 winks is marvelous. And when you when you train, you're breaking down the muscle, which is called um, catabolic. And when you train and when you're eating your food, 
you replenish it. That's called anabolic, so you rebuild the muscle. So you actually tear microscopic tears in the muscle. They used to think it was called, it was a lactic acid. They used to give you the soreness, but it isn't. You actually have hundreds and hundreds of little microscopic tears. It splits, the muscle splits. And then you have to take the creatine, built in protein, and that replenishes it. But you have to take that within about two or three hours. You have a window. You must take it. If you don't, that window closes, and it can take up to 36 hours to replenish the glycogen in your liver. So you, what you do, you, you need your sugars as well. You need to make a banana before you train about an hour before, protein about an hour and a half before. Uh, don't eat food before the gym, because if you eat food before, blood goes to your stomach but you don't want to go into your stomach because it helps the food to digest. So what you want, you want to eat about an hour and a half before you have you go to the gym and then the body will have digested the food and then that blood will go into the muscles and you, you create you create the glutamine and your car carbohydrates and stuff. They give you energy, which is called uh, glycogen, which is broken down in your pancreas, which sets the beta cells off. And they break that down and they send it across in your stomach and your intestines and then it goes into your goes into your your liver and it stores as energy so that there that's where the energy is there but when you go catabolic catabolic means you burn up all the glycogen in your liver so the body then is the worst thing anyone can do is the body starts living off the living off the muscle so the muscle starts burning as energy so you get in your coat you're losing muscle because it's using that so you must have enough glycogen in your liver stored there but a good thing to do is if you if you do do that take two if you want them people do get to that take two or three or four amino acids halfway through training and maybe four at the end of training and that will give you an extra 20 minutes or more so if so you think you, you 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 feel flat you don't get the pump take them amino acids really good they're really good to repair the muscle tissue if you take amino acids after training about six of them you won't be sore the next day or the next day. It replenishes the muscles very quick. That's why people now are training a lot more because the, the amino acids are replenishing the body and rebuilding the body very quick. Where the old days it was just like people would have eggs, which are in abundance. They're the best two things for, for protein, eggs and milk. But the human body is very hard to digest milk because it breaks up in the tiny little little, uh, little kernels and little balls and it takes ages to digest in the stomach. So don't have protein drinks with milk because it takes hours and hours for it to break down. So it's detrimental to you. Use calves, calves, protein. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you can do that. It's good, mate. You can do that. You can use, you can use, you can do I'll tell you what's really good. Um, uh, goat's milk, goat's really good for people with asthma. Goat's milk is absolutely, it's a little bit dearer, but it's really, really good. Well, the best thing ever say is, Porridge is great. First thing in the morning, you want to get up in the morning. You want to make a banana or an apple or some type of fruit. I always have a banana. I have a pint of water as soon as I wake up. Go and make a cup of coffee. And then when you're, then you're doing your breakfast, I'll have maybe four, five, six eggs. And then I'll have two slices of toast. So if I'm feeling really young, I'll have three, but it'll be brown granary bread with, with butter, not margarine. Margarine's fucking no good for you. And I'd have um, maybe two or three pieces of bacon, a couple of sausages. You need a lot of food, especially protein. Well, the protein takes longer to digest in your body, which is meat. It takes about three hours, right? Carbs break about two hours. So you can eat more protein. You can eat, more, you can eat protein on the night, like chicken and pork and things like that, because there's no carbohydrates in that. So you can have that on the night. Later on, I used to have like a chop, and then later on, I'd have a piece of chicken, and then I'd have a protein drink with no milk in it. I'd just have pure protein, and I'd have like 40 grams. I'd drink half of it. And then about six o'clock in the morning, I drink the other half. I know I've had 40 grams of protein before you even get out of bed. So then you're out of bed and you have your, your meal again. So as long as you keep topping up all the time, yeah, the little dippy's been on. You just can't shut that fucking stupid mouth. You just can't, little crank. What are you doing now? Where's your predicts? I thought you weren't coming back on, you little crank. You little crank. Absolute crank. You just look like a complete fucking moron now. Everyone's laughing at you now. Absolute fucking laughing at you. I thought, I thought I was getting arrested, you divvy. Two to three weeks, that two to three weeks is up on the second. April Fool's Day is the second this year, because that's what you are, the April Fool. Absolute fucking compulsive lie. I told you, the lies he's been telling you about me, threatening his son and his wife, it's all shite. The cops went, there's no such thing as anything on here, not a thing. 
but they've got all the stuff now what he's been saying. It's what he's really been saying is what the cops going after. Yeah, the whole lot. I said, got the whole, I must put the whole lot on the other day. And I smoke cracking weed. It's going to look great in front of the fucking police now, isn't it? How's he going to stand on trial by admitting to taking drugs? He's got no chance now. No chance. No chance. So he wouldn't, I knew he wouldn't stop. Emma Baldy needs help. I knew it was me. But I don't care, Jamie. I really don't care. You're like a five-year-old child. What are you going to say? My dog's bigger than yours now. So my donkey's bigger than yours. You're on the fucking bend. And everyone can clearly see you're clinically insane. So, so get me at the train. So, yeah, so you need to put protein in. So what you better do now, you have your carbohydrates, you have your protein. Um, a lot of people say 60, 60% protein. Some people say 20% carbs and 20% fat. A, a good ratio as well. There's loads of different ways of doing this, but Poached eggs are nice. Yeah, I love poached eggs. They're my favourite eggs, poached eggs, because they're really nice to eat and they're easy to get down. Where fried eggs is not as nice for me. But I, I like I like having a breakfast every morning. Maybe a couple of eggs, a couple of to toast, a couple of bacon, a couple of sausages, half a tin of beans. There's 10 grams of protein in that as well. And then a half a, a, half a pint of milk I have in there with coffee. Two of them a day, there's another 20 grams of protein. So it's only a couple of, couple of maybe have two or three pints a day and two pints of milk a day it's 40 grams of protein but the way i train right that's it like i'll do like 500 reps straight off i don't rest i don't have like a 10 second rest or i don't rest i'll do like 25 side that or 25 side. that plus that is resting right? one that side then one that side and i'll do front of that rows. then i'll do run that way front of that rows. and then i'll just do bent over ones and i'll do up right row and i'll do a long pulling like that for you pulling there yeah but yeah be a delt and you yeah you yeah traps because it picks, picks them right up and you don't, you fix it, dig it your I'm, I'm really putting weight on now, really coming back now. The weights are going up. I'm doing like 15 key dumbbells now. When I was really, I was started off, I couldn't even pick that piece of, I couldn't even pick that tissue up. That's how bad I was when this cunt was torturing me, torturing me in a wheelchair. Going, I've got my mate with your to the phone you 20 times. I've got my mate, um, Bullshit the phone, yeah. I got my mate Sammy Tapp and I got my mate Paul Bennis. I got my mate the, the, Paul Bennis, Mick Sorby. It must have been about over a thousand people. A thousand times he's told me he's got people for me and threatened to beat me up. So that's great. If imagine that, that's why that woman says, This isn't, this isn't the um, religious communication. This is stalking you. You and them have been stalked for, at the time it was about two and a half years. She said, You've been getting stalked for two years. This is the ravens of a complete lunatic, she said. She said, he'll definitely get about five or six years. That, so that's what their conclusion was at the end of it. But but um, he just keeps getting off because he's a little snitch. So what's happened now is the cops have got, because we've, we've got the complaints police in from London, they've come in and we've had to do it that way. So we've complained and the cop Come on, he said, listen, you'll get a fair deal with me. I'm, in, I'm Inspector Brian, I called him. I couldn't believe it. I thought, he is a Jesus. So that's what's happening now. So this Inspector Brian now is in liaison with Emma and the police to make sure they're doing the job properly because they never turned up three times. The neighbours phoned the police. She phoned the police when the house was on fire. They never come. And the neighbour next door phoned them, who was a prison officer, and she's a policewoman next door to me. The phone never turned up. So how are they going to lie to these? They're going to say these are lying as well, the police, and the and the ambulance service woman, she works for the ambulances, and her husband's a paramedic. They came in when my house was on fire and put the fucking fire out. I would have been bent, bent alive. And that scumbag got it done. That little scumbag got it done. And denying he'd he, he, he done it, but we've seen the screenshots of the kids he sent to and how much money to pay for it. But we didn't want to get the kids next. Because one was only 15, he was a 15 and 16 year old child. Olive oil, yeah, olive oil is good. Chopped onion, lemon juice. Marish. Then lemon juice, yeah, lemon juice as well. I, I have a tablespoon for lemon, lemon juice every day before I get up. I put it on the top about five or six in the morning. I wake up. I have it in the morning when I wake up and I have it at night. So I have a, a tablespoon for lemon, a table for, I just get the uh, apple cider vinegar and drink a little bit and put the lid on. And then do the same with the other one. So I drink that and then just have a glass of water, half a pint of water. Then later on when I get up, I will do it again. So I take a pint of water in my system and I try and get a pint, like two pints in the morning. Then every hour or so I have half a pint. So I probably have about seven or eight pounds to ten pounds a day. When I was on the steroids and eating loads, 
I was saying 10 pounds a day to flush all the shit out of your system with water. When you're training, if you're dehydrated, say you're benching, your bench bench goes down by 3%, which is a hell of a lot. And say you're training, your fitness goes down as well. You need water in your body to keep you going because that's you you could not have you could have not you could have food, no food for weeks. People live for months with no food. But water, a couple of days, two, two or three days, you would see the trouble. So the like oxygen's the number one you need. Then next one is, is water. So people don't realise how much water is good for you. Your muscles are about 77% water as well. Your brain's 90% water. So when you're got a headache and you're pounding your head, 90%, nine, nine times out of 100, it's lack of water. If you go and get a glass of water and drink it slowly, like for 10 minutes to drink it, and then if it's not gone, take another one. Within an hour, you, that completely goes, that headache, because the water's topped back up in your head then. Your water, the brain's full of water. Like people on the ecstasy, when they used to drink too much water, used to kill them. But you you need water. That's why you've got that headache. How People migrate. If you start drinking water, it'll go away in a couple of days. It just dis dissipates. <laughs> yeah, so he thinks, he really thinks I'm bothered about me. Yeah, well, don't give a fuck. <laughs> He's fucking lads. He's a cooker. He? he is cooking. He's crackers. I'd rather have a great physique than I've still got. But nearly 60, you look a fucking pun punchy fat belly with fucking cellulite. I have got an ounce of cellulite on me. I have got an ounce of fat. I showed my stomach last week. There's about half an inch of fat on my stomach. That's it. They say if you can pinch more than an inch. It's probably half an inch there of body fat on me. That's all I've got. And it's got, you can see by my face, there's no little bit the neck there. There's no double chin up or up. He's got a fucking grin like a fucking big um, orangutan. Orangutan-y. Little ginger orangutan. Rips tea. Eggy bread, yeah, we, I like that. I like French bread, it's really nice. Emma does me fried bread, I know you're not supposed to have it, but I have one a day. Not every day, I eat it, it's fucking beautiful. 90 grams of pork in one meal, that's good. I wouldn't take 90 grams in one go though, because you can't you can't digest 90 grams in one, one meal, mate. You can only digest so much, I would probably break that in at three meals, at, like three times. Every hour, every one, every, every one and a half hours, I've a, have a protein. I'd probably do that. Like. You probably have, you better have enough about. Well, depends what your weight is. If you like my side, you need about three hundred grams to four hundred grams of protein in a day. Depends what your body weight is. So you definitely need more when you're bigger. It's like anything. It's like like I say, like a car, anything, a, a, a generator, whatever you've got, you need more diesel for it because it's a big, massive, big as this room generator. You need loads of diesel. For it. It's just like a little suitcase when you only need a little bit of diesel, but because you're bigger and, and yeah, eating, eating, eating every two, you've got to eat every two, it's two and a half to three hours to keep right. That's what I used to do. Every two and a half hours a day. Cool, metallic uh, rate. Metallic, you've got a high metabolic rate. Yeah, so you want to eat more food if you've got a high metabolic rate. That means you're burning food up a lot quicker than most people. So you'd, you'd probably be eating abundance a lot. I would eat, I fucking eat everything, mate. I have two or three bowls of porridge a day. I have about five, six eggs a day, two or three pints of milk a day. I mean, Emma does me four meals a day, and I'll have four protein drinks and four energy drinks. I just never stop eating, but I'll never stop training. I'm training like three times a day, every day, seven days a week. The odd day I have off, and that'll be twice a day I'll train. That'll be classes me not training. When expen well, exp expenses, when you dedicate yourself to Training. Yeah, you, it's worth it in the end. I mean, look, I'm, I'm looking 16 years now, and I'm still going. I look at like, the injuries having and stuff like that. I'm still going up the inside. My blood pressure is up a little bit, but nowhere near like you would like most people, which is what I've been through. And the stress we've had with this fucking in here over the last four years, when that goes, it's just going to be a great life again, but back to normal. Because that idiot, he's like 20 pounds a day, seven days a week, texting shite all the time. But the shite is texting now, is getting him in trouble with the police now because of 10. They've looked at us for 40 months and went, wait a minute. They've looked at him for 10, 10 minutes and then went, if you've got this information, you send it to us. This won't even make court. So there's no going to be no court. I knew there's been no court case. 18 stone, yeah, you need about 300 or 400 grams of protein a day, definitely. I'd say 300 grams a day at least, mate. Go up slowly so you don't hit your, um, yourself because it can help. Yeah, damage your kidneys having too much quick. 
just go up slowly and be under there, go up another 10 grams and build it up there. Uh, yeah, you need you need that. Right? So you need 19 stones, so you, you, you definitely need like about 7,000 calories a day at least. Plus you've got higher metabolism, you may you need 10, you may you need 10 a week. Even on the weekend you could go up and have cheap meals and go for 10,000 calories a day. But the more you eat, the bigger you get. And if you're training right, you won't get fat. No better than training, you come out of the gym and you're fucking buzzing and everything's great, everything's inside you, you're going out, you're like, hey, mate, how are you doing? Everyone's happy because the training makes you feel great. If you're a healthy body, healthy mind, healthy mind, healthy body, both go in sync. You can't have a healthy, like a healthy brain without a healthy body because you've got them both together. It's like having a horse and carriage. You can't have the horse and you can't have a horse and carriage, you know, with, with the, just on the tongue so it wouldn't work. So you've got to have the horse and carriage together. It is expensive, but what what else would you spend your money on? I used to spend fucking thousands on drugs, spending crack cocaine, and I have to two or three grand in a fucking night gone. So what would you rather spend on? I'd rather spend it on food. It's it's not that deal if you go to places like if you go to places like um farm foods, you get eighteen you get a sixteen piece of chicken for about a tenner. If it's all filleted chicken, you go and you get you get about fifteen pieces of fish. It's the cheapest fucking it's the cheapest chips. It is cheapest chips. And it's it's really good chicken as well. You can get you can go to the slaughterhouses and get meat and stuff. You can get them there cheaper. Like um, what's it at? Just up the road from us. Come the name of where I did the fucking documentary. If I remember now, the Bernard Sedgefield. I think Sedgefield is it? Sedgefield's the slaughterhouse up there. Bolton's it's called. It, 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 if you spend a hundred pound in Tesco's, you'd pin the meat's not good because it's all processed and it's all fucking. It's been um, it's been tumbled. What they do is they can't tumble it here because it's against the horse. So they do it in, in places like Holland. They fill it full of water and a big tumble, like a big drop, like a tumble dry type thing. It's like, and they put it there, and the water goes in, in, into the in the chicken and the burgers and stuff, and they inject them with water. So you get the burger like that, and when you put it on, it, the fat's hitting you in the face because water doesn't work with oil. So the oil's spitting it out, you can then, then you get the burger that big. It comes out fucking that big when you, you, you fried it. So they do that in Holland and sell it over to us, frozen. And it's been frozen that way and they're allowed to do it, which is fucking wrong. But what you do is you, you get the meat out of farm, farm food is really good for um, bodybuilding. There's loads of stuff in there you can get, loads of good stuff, uh, which is really cheap, especially for bodybuilding. Marvelous, the frozen packs, and you get like five packs of this and five packs of that and veg and stuff. You're, talking, you're not talking a lot of money, honestly. You're nowhere near, and all these, you know, when I go, all these, it's fantastic for, for meats and stuff. You've just got to shop around. You can't just go to one fucking shop, like, and you've got to shop around back and so you think, I'll get me chicken out of that one. And you have a day out, it's great. You have a day out of out, in the car and different shops, and you get all your stuff and pack it in there, and you've got enough, like, say, for two weeks. And then it's just two weeks, you go, and then you have to go and get your milk and stuff every other day. But we love it, we never we just go shopping everywhere. Fast, need very fast, right? Need four meals a day. Yeah, the real four meals a day. Yeah, four meals is alright. Okay, it's easy to do. Easy to do. Eggs, eggs. Uh, you can do poached eggs. You can do boiled eggs. You can do fucking pork. You can do mushrooms and um, an omelette and things that are beautiful. To, 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 and, Bit of veg in, so you buy the packs of eggs. They're like you get five packs for a, you get five, five, six, five, six packs, something like a five or something in um, farm foods. So probably like broccoli, brilliant for you, really good for you, gives you energy. Uh, spinach is good, things like that, really good. Turn and turn up, uh, really good to have some veg put in with it. It's nice and it's easy to eat. Yeah, but what, what you do there, mate. You use protein drinks that way. So what you do is you you make your protein drinks, make maybe two or three protein drinks for the day. So that's what I do. You're right. It is hard to eat, but the thing is, if you're drinking it, it's fucking a piece of piss. You go by you go by you go to the toilet, take your bag to the toilet, you just drink your protein drink in the toilet, put them back on, put it back, and then go back to work. It's easy. So you have maybe four meals, three or four meals. Like you eat three decent big meals, and then have four protein drinks and a couple of uh, make sure you have loads of water. 
to help you flush out your kidneys. Yeah, oh yeah, easy nice on a bit of toast. Yeah, I like uh, I like toast with cheese on, spinny cheese on. Yeah, all the all the night uh, the cheap the, the, the thing is the bodybuilding, all the stuff that you eat for bodybuilding is cheaper. A lot cheaper. You can get all like, like these shops that now there's an abundance of uh, cheap food. It's brilliant. Need Mila, Peter. You need a skip. I need a skip. <laughs> you need a skip. Are you sure fucking do? Yeah, I went up to when I was on that holiday, I was eating twenty thousand calories a fucking day. He's going, ah, he's full of shit. Well, I was honestly if you were there, you'd see me. You could eat as much as you want because they had the, the, you used to get a a, a a bangle thing on you, like a wrist, like a, a little elastic band. You have your name on. You do that with your arm. You get what you want. Lobsters and everything. When I was in, um, I was at when Dominican Republic was fucking brilliant, absolutely marvelous. We all loved me over there because it was massive. Tan to death. Walking on the street, hey Rambo, Rambo, I'm fucking, I'm bigger than him. Oh, he gives a break. <laughs> and when I was going for the, uh, when I went over to, to, to Greece, they loved me there. Right? I was training in the gym there with a the slide these man. said, You come to my, my son's gym. I was squatting 600 pounds in the gym. He loved it. I trained there every day. You know, I've never seen anyone as big as you or strong. You really been. There was loads of people when I was in Dominican coming up, shaking my hand, and that German lads who were trained on the weights and stuff. He said, you strong man, and yeah, he said, I can tell by your physique, your traps are huge. And when I was on holiday, walking down the street in China, all the Chinese were obsessed with me. They were like, all taking pictures of me. My legs were fucking huge. She, the woman, she said, we're from America, we're from California. As she said, uh, when, when all the bodybuilders come from, she said, but I've never seen legs as big as yours, she said. Never. She was a bodybuilder as well. And her husband, he was at the training where she competed. And I bumped in about four times in the street, going to the uh, sevens, rugby was on. I minded um, 11 people, no, 10, 10, well, 11 people, yeah, 11 people I minded uh, in Thailand for three days. I got food poisoning and then we went to China for seven, uh, seven days, seven, eight days in China. Beijing, I was at. There was people who were lovely over there, really nice, like, respectable. But the fucking food, I was, I was walking along, yang, 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 yang. Them little kid, them lovely little kid. Next minute. Fucking big black clock thing with big fucking legs and hanging that all doing that and then sprinkling the sugary stuff on like candy and, and crunching that all the fucking went right through me. I'm nearly barking and all this yellow stuff was coming out of it. And I was fucking thrown up nearly. Yang yang yang. They have, they have the dearest meal in the world is a snake. What they get and they put it in. I don't know if it's China or, or Japan. I think it's China. They put the snake in a a, a, a glass container like that, a tube, and they fill it with water. No, sorry, they fill it with that much water. And what they do is the snake, they feed the snake still, and the snake urinates into the water and into the tub, and that builds up that. And then the snake then falls to pieces, dies in there with the weed and everything. Obviously, the acid in the weed just kills it, and the flesh of it just all falls to the bottom. And it's in there for I don't know how long, some a year or something, and then they give it out, and it's five thousand dollars, million dollars for a bowl about that big, and it's like a snake. I saw all the pieces of its skin, like a corpse, the little bits of meat and that. So they eat the the the, the, the um, the, it's like a soup, like um, in a bowl, putting a little tiny bowl, something like fucking thousand dollars a ten teaspoon or something like that. Fucking mad. that's the dearest meal in the world, they say. And the, the cleanest water it's ever been. They, they get it. The Japanese, what they do is they go out to Alaska, where there's never been any pollution for, for millions of years. There, there's no pollution whatsoever. So what they used to do, what they still do, is they go out and get a huge, as big as fucking as England or something, iceberg. Because an iceberg, you see the top like that, and underneath it's fucking massive. They tow it back with ships back to Japan, and then they get it in, and then they break it up, and then they put it in there tanks in there and then they break the water down the water is spotless there's no pollution in it then they put it in the bottles it's something like 100 pound a bottle it's really really expensive i think it's called photon or something like that's called which is the most dearest water because there's never been any pollution in alaska because there's no works there or anything so yeah 
Right, guys, I'm going to shout. I've been on two and a half hours. Um, thank you. And uh, anyone want any help training or any advice? I've been doing it about 40, was it? You know, 40, 40 odd years now. I started when I was 13, I'm nearly 60. So all them years I've trained. Trained with world champion, Bell Fox, who was the best bad biceps in the world at the time. Uh, Tom Platts, I've trained with him. Tom, top people I've trained with. I met Dorian Yates. Trained with these top people in the 70s and in the 80s. Uh, I used to train with loads of top uh, pro bodybuilders. So I know my stuff. Yeah, I was eating 10,000 at least. So sometimes more, mate, there that day. I was eating every fucking thing because it was all free. Yeah. Right, I'm going to show guys. I'll see you soon and thank you very much. Peter the Vox, love you, son. Hope you're okay. I haven't been on board yet. I'll let that take the shot. I'm on a fucking club on computers. Oh, God, my knees. Oh. Really see pain. Would that ever? Loads of nice people on there tonight. The big lad there, I want to learn about what, what, what works. Yeah. The big lad there. I've been a half. Oh, Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-